Hello, 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 and welcome back to day two of Birds of Prey, episode two. For those of you that don't know exactly what Birds of Prey is, it is a tournament that has been organized, hosted, and run by none other than The Goose House. It's a tournament that is exclusive to women and those of marginalized genders as well. And honestly, guys, there is so much potential, so much talent, and yesterday we saw a really overwhelming set of games and with 2000 2000 pounds on the line as our prize pool it's all to play for here for those of you that don't know my name is jasmine canuga also known as veracity and i am joined by the wonderful the amazing nari mizuki or as i'm going to refer to her sam oh stop it (laughs) kiss the homies kiss all the homies (laughs) That's going to be when you're going to stop with that. We're honestly. never going to stop with that. Never stop kissing the homies. But yeah, we're going to be yeah. seeing an Oxygen versus Project X semi final. Nari, what can you tell me about these teams? So this is a really exciting matchup. Project X has been on a massive upward swing. They had an iffy start at the beginning of the year with Huntress Trials, but since then they've been consistently placing either second place, first place in every single uh, female tournament for the last couple of months. Well, Okay, I always forget that most people take couple to mean two. I take couple to mean like a few. So the last few months, uh, they've been doing exceptionally well. They just come off the back of a second place at the Hunter's Trials in August. And this is one of the most cracked teams. I say this consistently. They are the number one unsigned female team in Europe at the moment. So really looking forward to you know, giving them an opportunity to try and steal a first place crown again. That being said, they're coming up against Oxygen. Now, this is a team, uh, Oxygen, the organization, has had a female team since February. And for those that are familiar with EMEA uh, VCT, you'll know that Oxygen has a really good all-male team as well. The female team did exceptionally well at the start of the year. They had some really good results, but they've started to kind of make a few roster change-ups here and there. We saw Felipe yesterday. She actually used to be on Oxygen, uh, but now they've, as I said, made a couple of roster changes, and they're looking to prove something here because their most, most recent results haven't been obviously where they want it to be. So here, finally, in the semifinal match, of, of course, that's a guaranteed you know, third to fourth place, but they really want to try and clinch that at least second place and hopefully win it out. Yeah, and of course, worth mentioning as well that a couple of the girls over from uh, Project X are actually XCS players. We spoke about this a little bit yesterday and, you know, the potential of, okay, the raw aim, you know, the game sense and all of those different elements are already there. So I'm interested to see whether or not our previous CS players can kind of edge it out a little bit when it comes to taking those crucial gunfights. But I do believe we have our map vetoes now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so if we take a look at that, unfortunately, we don't have a graphic for it, so everybody just use your imagination. But uh, Project X banned out Haven, Oxygen banned out Bind. Our first map of the series is going to be Split, which of course is Project X's pick. Then Oxygen decided to go with Icebox. And our final map of the series, if we have to go to it, is going to be Breeze. And I'm I'm really hoping we go there. (laughs) Yeah, I know yesterday you were absolutely gutted that Breeze got banned out from the get-go and you were absolutely heartbroken that we didn't get to see a breeze map but who knows maybe you know both of these teams incredibly talented so much potential who knows maybe we will actually take it to the third map i would not be surprised in the least but of course before we get to that third map we got to start with map one and that of course as i mentioned is going to be split now Yesterday, our teams had some very interesting adaptations to the compositions, kind of these off-meta picks, and they made them work out really well. So I'm looking forward to seeing if we're going to have something similar here today with these matchups. Of course, Split as well has a fairly telegraphed composition. You'll usually have a Sage or a Viper just to try and uh, either take control of mid or kind of shut down those uh, choke points. And then sometimes you'll see a Breach come out. I'm pretty sure we're going to see Project X running the Breach because Glance is like one of the craziest Breaches. She's up there with Slicey, just a phenomenal Breach player. We're definitely going to have a Jet coming out because, well, what is a composition without Jet? That was the biggest surprise that that we saw yesterday in, uh, compositionally. But I think today it's going to be just a little bit more standard. Yeah, I honestly cannot wait to get started in these games. I'd love to see, I want to see how a Killjoy could be utilized here. I know a lot mm. of people maybe think Killjoy, not really too sure about it, but particularly um, 
over towards that B site, I feel like absolutely crucial, very useful to get that initial, you know, early info, especially when combined with the use of a SOVA as well and using that recon to get uh, info as early as possible. But should we jump into our agent selects now? Well, I will say that SOVA would be very unlikely just given that it is split and he's far less than ideal on this map but there we go glance already locked into that breach as expected cinnamon on the sky now cinnamon and smurfette are actually one of the most terrifying double duelist combos in europe in the female scene at the moment like they are scary and i'm, I'm full on expecting cinnamon to play the sky like a duelist which a lot of players have been doing you you kind of play it similarly to phoenix you know throw a flash out swing on it try and get a kill there likely to see that popping off and then oh the astra pick coming out and it looks like ness ness has always been on a kind of a, the smokes player so i'm happy to see that she's kind of leaning towards the astra at the moment as well we saw how dangerous that can be as opposed to the omen it is a stylistic difference but there are a few things that you can make happen for yourself uh, with the Astra better than what you could with the Omen. And of course, there's the, the Killjoy that you were hoping for. Now, yeah. important to note that there is only the one Sentinel available for Project X. And again, it's like, it's Sage, if you can consider her like a real Sentinel. Uh, so information gathering is going to be slightly more difficult, but that's where the Sky can really come in handy because obviously the Trailblazer gets that information. It's essentially an owl drone, but with a stun. And then you've got the guiding lights as well. So as soon as you blind someone, you know that they're there. So there is some potential for information gathering, but we might see Oxygen go for like an information starving type of set up because they know that project x don't have a lot to get that info and are you surprised to not see the use of a jet on our defenders as well or do you think it's it's more than okay for them to not roll with the use of a jet it can definitely work listen i i mentioned this yesterday and i said you know jet is still one of the most powerful agents in the game and to not have her makes a lot of things difficult for example you struggle to get value out of the operator but we have see, seen some teams do phenomenal work even without having a jet available even being able to op you can opt with a raise if you can like satchel really well and you can use that instead of the um tailwind for example so there is definitely some play there that can come in and of course you can deny a ton of space with the rays as well using those paint shells not as effective as a map like say haven but still very doable yeah definitely doable i'd say do you think we're gonna see that oh no we are not gonna see that aggression i was really hoping we'd maybe see like a slow orb and then everybody push in but never mind they have smoked that off so they are able to cross on over towards heaven relatively safely smoking off uh upper heaven as well but are they aware that there's actually two people sat towards the site smurfette attempted to get some shots off but missing very narrowly and Ritha. oh that was a jump shot and a half wasn't it <laughs> Oh, very well played there and now oxygen only two players left alive as project x has managed to make their way in onto site if cinnamon has a heal there uh okay no we're, we're not getting healed up she might have actually already burnt that so we're going to be a little bit low hp and that gives oxygen a little bit of an advantage but they have fewer angles that they're going to be able to swing on oh the gunfire going back and forth Getting flashback, there needs to be a follow-up there, surely, with the stun coming in as well. I believe she only has five bullets to work with. Kim picking up the first kill. Gia, this is all on you now. One versus three, unfortunately unable to close that out. And there we have our first round. Yeah, super good attempt there from Oxygen. They had pretty decent control, but Project X, you know, off the back of Smurfette, just going absolutely wild. Uh, I, I, I shared this clip with you a little bit earlier on, but back in the, the Hunter's Trials in the Grand Final, she got like an op ace on this map. Obviously, they were, they were on defense at the time, but like, it, it's just crazy what this girl can do. So she, she holds W, she goes in with the Frenzy, that's the up close and personal gun, kind of expected, and some great follow up from the rest of the team. I'm definitely excited to see her get on an AWP as well. So yesterday we mentioned safety in numbers. It does seem like we're seeing kind of like a common reoccurrence as the gunfire does go down through towards A and now they're making their way up towards heaven. I think they might already know that, you know, they have numbers advantage up towards heaven and they were actually stacking on that A site. But I don't doubt that some util was still going to get used towards this area to clear it out completely. You can see them edging their way ever so slowly towards site together. 
This was a great fake from Project X. Make all that noise over on the A site, then move over onto B. And now they just have to set up those post plants. Of course, Oxygen have to move together because they don't have the guns to promote actually moving in separately. So they kind of have to, oh dear me, and this is it. Cinnamon and Smurfette is going absolutely bonkers once again. And Kim holding it down here in heaven. It's just, oh, it's so gross. But now this is this is where we see the real action taking place, right? This is where we see everybody kind of run like the wind, right? Everybody <laughs> just kind of has to full send it. And it does look like, okay, see, I like this. This is why I was so keen to, do, to see the use of the killjoy. Because obviously if they do like to make their way through ramp and onto site, then, you know, immediately your alarm bot gives you that info, pop you two swarms, and that's an incredible amount of damage, especially when placed in combination with the use of your turret for that info too. Yeah, and they've got some Astra Stars there on top of where the alarm bot is, so potential for some concusses as well as they try and make their way in onto site. And that kind of saves some of your utility because you can actually see one of the nano swarms out towards the back of A site. But Project X not in the least deterred. Smurfette going in hard and immediately gets the first pick off, and that is all the Killjoy utility off the board. Yeah, I mean, with that dash onto site as well, I feel like as soon as those swarm grenades had been popped, it was just a little bit too late because by that point she's already pushed up onto site. She's in your face and does actually manage to pick up a ki kill off the back of that as well. Stage wall comes up to deny entry in onto the A site. And again, that's just going to buy them a little bit of time. But Ness trying to use these stars, putting up some smokes here and there. <laughs> some gravity wells using absolutely everything at her disposal to try and create an entryway. Ritha goes huge with the pain shells and a kill off the back of that. But Glance, oh, tries so hard. Smurfette manages to get another and it's down to the 1v1. Proxima so close. She has a chance. No, running out of time. Oh, she knows she hasn't got time for this. At this point, you just try and go for the kill, but that was a very nice try. Had they had just a little bit more time on the board, they definitely wouldn't have, would have been able to clear that out. Unfortunate as well, because Glance actually went for an upgrade to the Vandal. She had time to run away to get out of the explosion, but unfortunately wasn't able to, so couldn't hold on to that gun. Not the end of the world, though, because, of course, after winning three rounds in a row, you can afford to buy. You, you can afford to spend some cash. And this is going to be a Chico round for Oxygen. Half armor as well. No ultimates online just yet. And Kim already has Cosmic Divide ready. Cinnamon is one ult all the way from having the Seekers. And you know, we spoke about information starving. Well, that will give a ton of information. But at the moment, they seem to be doing just well, uh, just as well without any of that. Yeah, absolutely. See, we've not seen someone actually facing the facing ramp from towards heaven, but it doesn't seem like she's really going to be able to do too much damage on that front as, you know, site is wide open, you know, it's free for the taking and I feel like at this point you just kind of stick together and play for info and play off the back of each other. You oh, that wall is so good. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, that was, such a, that was such a promising flank, it really was. And, you know, three versus four, not the worst situation to kind of be placed in. You know, heal comes in as well to regen as much health as possible. Slow orb goes down to kind of prevent anybody from pushing out through that elbow area. And Cinnamon gets taken out. Smurfette with two huge kills. Oh, that was... Smurfette and Roxy held it down. That... Cosmic Divide was actually massive because it cuts off both the entrance onto the A site from the back of site and it cuts off heaven. So if you want to take the fight, you have to push in. And the fact that Oxygen are on an eco round, that puts them in a very disadvantageous position. They do attempt a really sneaky flank and Ness actually manages to get two kills there, which is massive. But Project X able to clean it up and Smurfette holding back of site, the dual angles coming through, so difficult to force your way through. Now this time around, Smurfette's going to have Bladestorm available. Oxygen do have Showstopper, so they can potentially try to create some space with that, maybe force Project X off of the, the, the site so that they can't get the plant down. Yeah, I think I think she was going to try and go for that alt orb as well, but as soon as that wall got shut out, she decided, you know what, I do not want this smoke. Flash, unable to completely flash her. Oh my god, Smurfette going huge. I see why you were saying uh, all the all the wonderful things you were mentioning about Smurfette and her <laughs> raw talent. 
She's absolutely devastating and does exactly what you want an entry to be doing. She gets in, she gets those opening kills, creates the space for the rest of the team, and now Oxygen down to... Oh, no, Ness! Oh, tries to use the stars and in the middle of that animation gets taken down. But Rita is here to try to even that out. One versus two. Smurfette she has her number though. Yeah, she has her nade, her boom bot, and of course she has her showstopper as well. You see coming into play now. She is aware of where she is, but unfortunately makes contact with the wall instead of one of those players. Oh, they're both up towards heaven. Oh, that was so close. Good attempt there. Great placement of the star as well to pull her off of the spike as soon as she started to defuse. I mean, no matter what she did there, Project X had a really great line of sight because of where they planted the spike. So they both rotate up to heaven and then they swing out at the same time. Kim pops the gravity well. Smurfette swings out and it's an easy kill there. A valiant attempt there from Rita nonetheless, using that showstopper, as I mentioned earlier, to try to create some space. So she pops that, trying to force the last few players off of site so that she can at least get onto the site. But because of where Spike was planted, too difficult to try to get that defuse. Now a much needed tactical pause comes through for Oxygen Esports. They're going to be on a less than advantageous buy. I think they're going to be forced back down onto either a half buy or a full eco. But they do have three ultimates available to try to work with. One of them is the Cosmic Divide. We've seen how powerful that, key, uh, that can be. Project X used that to great effect about two rounds back. So hopefully Oxygen can try and replicate some of that success. Now, do you think we'll actually see any of these ults being used if they are electing to kind of stick to being placed on an eco? It's tough to say. Sometimes ultimates do come out in an eco, especially if you feel like you've managed to wedge yourself some sort of an advantage. Uh, and obviously, if had they had a jet and the jet had a blade storm, then you would definitely see that yeah, come out on yeah. the eco round. But for the moment, it's more than likely that they just try to like get through this round so that they can buy up in the next. It's but they want to do chaos. as much damage as they can to try and cripple economy. I mean, two of the players on Project X are all down to triple digits. They'll be able to buy for one another, obviously, but you want to try and cripple that if you can. Yeah, now of course they have the info. There are three of those players going up towards heaven. She has been pulled into the gravity well, and then on top of that, you've got the slow orb coming into effect as well. Flash goes in, but unfortunately, no follow up. And Smurfette picks up two of those kills. Oh my word. Smurfette and Cinnamon just take control of the space. I love how they play off of one another. It's exactly what they do when Cinnamon's on Phoenix. They flash for one another and then swing on that. And then, of course, you've got Glance doing the same thing here in mid. If she uses a flash out in mid, then someone can swing on her as well. So they have all the flash potential. It completely denies Oxygen Esports sight. You swing on one another, you get those trades, and Project X firmly in control of this map. Yeah, I think at this point, Ness is just maybe trying to pick off a player or two if possible on the exit. And as I say that, gets the one tap, gets the headshot. Can she make it two? Unfortunately not. But that was a good attempt nonetheless. And no ultimates used as expected. It was just getting through that round. Now, however, they'll be able to buy up and hopefully leverage some of those ultimates into something. Of course, Project X have held on to their ults as well. And they've got some powerhouses here. They've got the Bladestorm available as well as the Rolling Thunder. And if you're trying to like defuse or you're you're just trying to hold a site, you can just use Rolling Thunder to completely open up a site so that you can wedge your way onto it. But when they have Cinnamon and Smurfette alive, they don't really need that because they just get onto site themselves there's so many options here and i don't know how oxygen answers this yeah we're seeing something a little bit different coming out from smurfette here taking a tiny bit of damage from those swarm grenades that were placed up towards heaven does smoke off towards ct and now she's got the intel and the info that there is someone pushing through b main as well gia i'm liking this playing very passive waiting for her teammates to kind of join it, join her instead of, you know, allowing them to pick them off one by one. Great utilization of the smokes here, trying to deny those sight lines. And of course the seekers come out, so that's gonna tell them exactly where the Project X players are. But is it gonna be enough to stop them from pushing through? Oh, please check above you. Oh no. Didn't even need to. Oh, oh. no way! Oh my god! Cosmic Divide comes up so huge there to dampen out the sound of the satchel. Yeah. 
but unfortunately you're coming into like a 1v4 situation you're not really gonna come out on top of that but it was you know for the style points i loved it <laughs> unfortunately they did have to burn two ultimates in that round and it still didn't work out the way that they had hoped now however okay so they're back down onto an eco but they do have lockdown available, which again, probably going to use it in the next round. But we're seeing a similar situation to what we saw yesterday, where it's like, you are so many points behind now, the train is running away. You have to stop mm -hmm. it as quickly as possible and start bringing it back in your own favor, or this train is just going to run away. Yeah, and it does seem like we're going to see another huge flank coming in from the team of Oxygen. And, you know, at this point, I'm not surprised if, you know, Project X have most I've definitely called their training. bluff. They've seen it happen again. They've seen it way many, way too many times before. And then with the Seekers coming in as well to give you all of that info, you know, okay, it's a full team behind us. Everybody is flanking. People just set up for after plants at this point. And look at the way that Project X have split themselves out as well. They've got the, the, the duelist duo up in heaven, so they're going to be guarding up that side. And the rest are on site, holding angles around this fight. It's going to be difficult to find a way in here. Yes, it does get traded out here. So Cinnamon is off the board. Smurfette's alone up here in heaven. Which... The slow... Oh, Mr. Oh, my God. <gasps> Gets the Smurf 2k, but Ness trades it out. I'm so impressed with Smurf gameplay you know i knew i'd be impressed as soon as i saw that all face i was like oh my godding like every every shot that was taken that you showed me but i i'm gonna need i'm gonna need lessons from you please smurfette <laughs> honestly you. the smurfette class please teach us how to <laughs> i mean her name says it all she's literally smurfing right now She's doing ridiculously yeah. well. 13 kills and four deaths. And she's just consistently entering time and time again. Mm -hmm. She'll get two or three kills just off the back of the barriers dropping. And the rest of her team just has to give her support. That being said, I mean, it's not like the rest of her team aren't doing anything. They are consistently there helping her and, you know, giving her that the support that she needs, whether it be the, the flashes or the heals or, you know, whatever the case may be. Now... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm seriously feeling for Oxygen because they have so much at their disposal. Oh, but Smurfette doesn't get the kill! Ness manages to get the kill and that's a massive opening here! Oh, I'm wondering I'm wondering how well Project X are actually going to be able to adapt with the loss of Smurfette. For mine, as I say that, Res comes in. And once again, you have a really powerful player on your team back up and running. Four versus five. Yes, there is a one player disadvantage but they have all the info of where they are and we're not seeing any kind of rotation coming in yet alt pops off as well make that three versus two unfortunately smurfette goes out again glance going huge for her team there yeah glance has that massive clutch potential she doesn't always come up super massive in the the early and mid round but late round if she needs to clutch that's what she does now oxygen had an amazing start to this round and it's all down to proxima to try and make it happen the, oh the guiding light gives away the information that that's where she is oh there's too many angles to check here if they swing at the same time there it is i Just feel like unable project... to hold down the angles Project X are incredibly good at swinging off of one another. We've seen it time mm -hmm. and time again with Smurfette in particular when her teammates are supporting her. They are really great at, you know, peeking off contact. And I love it. I feel like we don't see it anywhere near as enough. At least in my games, I most definitely do not. <laughs> but that's literally the what they've built here with this double flash setup. And then uh, what was, you know, they've also got the Astra to create smokes as well as the jet. So they can deny, they can starve information. But this is not like a long range type of team. This is a get in your face and shut you down as quickly as possible kind of team. And it's working out so well. It's actually reminiscent of like FaZe Clan. <laughs> I think it was really unfortunate. Speaking of, you know, sw swinging off uh, contact from one another, unfortunate that Slow Warp went down. Rissa! Oh! Rissa pops off. Okay, okay, I see you, I see you. This is where mid control is so important. They pop up that sage wall, and then when it gets shot down, all the information comes through that it's going to be a push through mid. They hold those angles. They actually manage to dodge most of the flashes because there's so much environment here in mid. You could just kind of take a step back a little bit, dodge out the flash, swing yourself, and win out those trades. And that showstopper coming up so huge, getting two kills, exactly what they needed. Now, that could have failed miserably, but damn if they don't make it work. Let's go!
Let's go indeed, that was nuts. I'm really hoping we don't see a 9-3 curse, please no. <laughs> don't know about that one. Remember Oxygen. what you see in the future. <laughs> oh no. Well, Oxygen finally haven't gotten one point on the board yet. Now it's actually made Project X like take a step back. This is the least aggressive round that they've shown and we're on round 11. It's taken so long for them to like take a pause. So they've got a little bit of a, a, a lurk towards the A site. Two players that side gonna make some noise. They potentially take down the Killjoy. <gasps> no, it's actually Smurfette that gets taken down. Gaia comes up so huge here. And hopefully that doesn't, it doesn't. The rotation hasn't started yet. Oxygen playing this super, super smart and patient. Oh dear, they've got all the info they need. Wow, that was nice. And Roxy popping off with two of those kills up towards heaven. Do they know that Rith is going to be here? Please tell me they do. She goes up on the wall. Ooh. They have absolutely no idea she's here. Oh my goodness. She's called it out to her teammates, but I am... Um, I guess this is just like a surprise moment for them. She's just <laughs> waiting for someone to peek through towards elbow, and I think she's going to get exactly that. Oh, but if it's... Is Glantz oh. expecting it? No, she's not! <gasps> How does Glantz win that? She's just too good. She wasn't even looking up in the sky and Reetha just not able to connect the shots. It is still a 2v3 here. Oxygen firmly in control of the map. They swing out on one another. And that's the last two players down, unfortunately, for Project X. Not able to clutch this one up. But Oxygen finally in this game. Yeah, it seems like they're feeling it now, you know. There, there might have been a little bit of a morale boost coming through after winning that first round. And now they're here, they're ready. They're ready for the 9-3. <laughs> well, that's what it's gonna have to be. They need to win this round. And unfortunately, yes, they've won two rounds in a row, but it hasn't been enough to stomp Project X down onto a complete save. Unfortunately, Kim's gonna be stuck on just a Spectre, but the rest of the players all have rifles. Ness, however, oh man, I was talking about potential raise up play. I can't wait to see what Ness does with this. She can just pop up a smoke, I suppose. So if she misses, put the smoke mm -hmm. down. But usually you just kind of fire into the direction where the op is. So that can go really badly. Or oh, Project X just dropped the Cosmic Divide. Do you think they were expecting that? That's massive. Yeah, I think most definitely. Smurfette pops off. Pops the ult as well. Managing to pick up two cheeky little kills there. Gia on the other side of this Cosmic Divide. Rainstar unfortunately gets taken out. And now I believe the wall itself has faded, so lots more space to kind of work with here. Line of sight, absolutely pivotal at this point. And there goes the Killjoy. Oh, picking one kill, unable to pick up any more as that flash comes through. All right, not quite the 9-3 we wanted to see, but 10-2, take it. We spoke yesterday about how uh, there was like a 10-2 scoreline. It was like, well, they're going to have to dig deep and, you know, you could be the best defensive side in the world, but if you can't get those first two pistol rounds, now it's reversed. You could be the best attacking side in the team, but if you can't win these first two pistol rounds, a 10-2 scoreline is a death sentence. You absolutely have to win, and you can see they realize that. They've got themselves a ghost and a sheriff. Oh, no, they sold the sheriff. Okay, so instead going for armor. Okay, that makes sense. You want to give yourself a little bit more survivability. Unfortunately, the classic doesn't have this, doesn't pack the same kind of punch as a sheriff might, especially at range. But at least you have just that little bit more survivability. Oxygen, they realize they have to win these next four rounds at the very least to stay in it. Yeah, especially with that Sage Wall going down, that slows them right down in their ability to push onto the site. You can see the rotation coming through as well. Cinnamon and Roxy got somewhat of a crossfire going on between the two of them. But with everybody swarming onto site, Flash goes down. Uh, Counter Flash comes in as well. And Spike hasn't actually been able to go down just yet. There we go, oh. Spike finally going down and now it is up these final two players to try and pull something magical off here. This is an important round for Oxygen to win. They've already managed to get three kills. The last two players left alive. Yes, it's Glance and Kim, but how do you clutch against four people? The answer, you probably don't. Kim gonna use the gravitational well there, manages to get one, but cannot follow it up with another. 
Proxima will get the finest final kill in the round there. That's the first pistol round going the way of Oxygen Esports. They're off to a good start. I, I kind of want to see some more rounds swinging in the favor of Oxygen, purely because I want more time to try and see what Smurfette can show us with an operator in hand. I'm all about the content, you see. <laughs> I want to see another race. Oh my goodness. So it'll be a tough ask, but it would be fun to see. What's also interesting here is seeing Rainsa. I wonder what the plan there is. She's just got up to a sheriff, so does she buy the attacking up? I can't see why else you would save credits in this round, but you know, we'll, we'll put that aside for the moment. It looks like they're going to be going for a pretty aggressive push straight in onto the B site here. The Sage Wall comes up. They do manage to destroy it. So that's going to open up some sight lines, but they're going to need to follow up on that. Oh, I'm not entirely sure why the counter Sage Wall didn't go down before they had used theirs to try and cross on over. Maybe it was to make use during a sneaky little diffuse. But Roxy being the last player standing. Okay. Yep. Big gun difference there as well. Oxygen using that very much to their advantage. Now this is where things can get hairy and you can see this is where the attack force comes in. Because obviously Oxygen, they don't want to necessarily buy up to a rifle round, but they've opted to take attack force so that I think that th this might be what they're talking about. They're like, okay, well, what are we going to do now? Are we going to try to force up? Or are we going to go with our bonus? And and how do we approach the next couple of rounds? Because we've won the first two pistols. But if we concede any rounds here, we're on a slippery slope into the danger zone. I'm, I, I can't wait to see what they actually opt to do. I'm hoping they kind of decide, you know what, well, at this point, we kind of want to buy up. We want to give it our best. And if you're going to, you know, put some more rounds on the board, pack a punch, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You, you want to do as much as you possibly can, but they also have to like weigh up pros and, cro uh, pros and cons. So they can like force up here and try to match guns. But if they lose this round, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be an absolute mess. Already, if they lose this round, it's going to be a mess. Then it's going to be even worse and it's going to take longer to build up to a point where they can actually do something. So it looks like, yep, they're just going to stick with the bonus for now. Oh, Spectres across the board. One ghost there. And what was interesting, obviously, I, I mentioned um, that we had a, a sheriff coming out for Sage to see what would happen there with that with the economy if they were up, looking to like buy up to a bigger gun here. But no, just up to the Spectre. Not quite matching guns. And also, we had two super aggressive rounds for the pistols. This time around, they're playing it really, really slow. Unfortunately, Kim getting that first pick off onto Gaia is not a good start for Oxygen. Yeah, absolutely not. And I love how, you know, they cut it. Oh, no. If only you had a dash oh away, Smurfette. Oh, if only. But there we go. Ooh. Roxy there to trade it out in quick succession with two of those kills. Can she make it a third? Maybe with the backup of her teammate, Cinnamon, going absolutely huge. And just like that, another round on the board for our defenders. Yeah, Project X putting in the work, doing exceptionally well here. I think that the start of that round really set the tone for it. Losing someone so early on and then having that numbers disadvantage and not really being sure, okay, how do we actually go from here? This will, however, be a full rifle round. Smurfette looking to probably get an alt orb and then get that uh, blade storm online. So we'll just have the Spectre coming through, but it's full rifles for Oxygen. No ultimates yet to speak of. I think we might see a battle for orb control. Yeah, and with nobody actually on the, on the B site, this gives them a lot of kind of room to work with, especially when you don't have that Sage Wall to kind of, you know, stop them from pushing onto site. You can see that Satchel already coming through, and there's already three of them on the site. Uh, that smoke didn't completely cover off Heaven, just made a little bit of a sliver. So a few players managed to get through onto the site. Spike's going to get planted here. And Project X not aggressing because they're busy setting up their angles first. You got one on flank watch just in case somebody's sneaking up through mid. Send out the trailblazer, gets the information. All right, there's one back of sight. The rest are towards garage. And now they have to figure out how do they approach this. Yeah, the smoke to kind of block the view as well. Smurfette just gets sprayed through the smoke. Proxima going absolutely huge for her teammates. And Glance <gasps> being placed in a 1v1 now. Fakes the diffuse. But unfortunately, Ooh. Ness too fast 
and most definitely too furious. Look at look at that butterfly knife. <laughs> Just run straight through the smoke as soon as she hears the fake on the, the, the fake tap on the spike. Manages to get the kill while glances. Because obviously you have to like pick your gun back up. That's kind of how the animation works. So get caught mid-animation. Manages to get the kill there. Fantastic stuff. And again, I mean, despite the fact um, that we see Oxygen winning that round, they still aren't able to get a full buy. So they've got full rifles, but they don't have full armor. They have, however, forced Project X into a very unfavorable position with two of their players the down on Spectres. Vision. One of them is Smurfette, but... I mean, when you have Smurfette on your team, eh, Spectre, Vandal, eh, same, same. I mean, she's, she's just going to dash towards them and shoot them in the face anyway, right? We, we saw her do it in the Obscuring previous vision. half. Slow and steady once again. Oh, man. Oxygen really, really taking time here to figure out how they're going to approach this. They're holding so far back towards B. I think that this is another one of those cases of, like, making some noise, trying to do a little bit of a fake. But Cinnamon has been given so much time to push through into mid. If they don't check this corner, if they don't even suspect this corner, oh, this could be so troublesome. Troublesome indeed, but with that flash going in, maybe she could do oh, some no. damage. Oh, no. Does manage to pick up one of those kills, however. And now it does look like they're going to start maybe pushing on towards that A site. Smoke goes up to, you know, deny the vision. And in comes the raise ult. Unfortunately, she's running out of time with nobody nearby. <laughs> you can see you can see them panicking and running away. Okay, that's that's the first thing I do. As soon as I hear like a raise ult pop, I'm like, okay, everybody move away from me. Everybody go away. <laughs> Head for the hills. They actually yeah. managed to pull a rotation from Project X, started moving over towards that B site as soon as we saw the kills in mid. But it was interesting because obviously Cinnamon would have communicated that they're heading through sewers. Eventually, they start making their way back onto the site. Trade's going back and forth here. It's down to a 1v2. Gaia has to make something happen. Flash comes out and she's just not able to get away. Cinnamon with the cleanup and the 3k on the round. We are now on match point and Oxygen... <gasps> They are suffering at this point. Can they even buy? I don't even think so. Nope. <laughs> they're going to have one of those janky buys and they're going to have to try to make something happen with one hero rifle and a few pistols. It's not looking good. Things are looking a bit dire, but at this point you think, okay, just buy up as much as you can and invest the ults that we have. Who knows, maybe if they pop that ult towards the B site, We'll see Cinnamon and Co. maybe panic a little bit and potentially run away. But when you know you have rifles in your hands, you just, I think you just kind of opt for, okay, full send it, push them and contest the site. Oh, Seekers come out so they know that it's probably a full push. <gasps> Glance takes so much damage off the back of those paint shells. She's in so much danger. But look at this rotation from Project X. They're going for a pincer maneuver and the Seekers don't notice it. There's only one seeker that goes back, so they know that there's one, at least one person that might be trying to flank around, but it's not going to be enough to stop the flank from coming through. Yeah, the spike hasn't even actually been planted yet. You can see plant only just going in as well. Ness has the info that there are two players on the flank. Calls it out to her teammate, and now they definitely check this corner. Surely, uh, unable to actually connect those shots and pick up the kills, but... Smurfette taking a little bit of damage, make that a lot of bit of damage as Rainbow picks up the kill onto her and... Okay, see that's that's what I wanted to see. Oxygen picking up another round, investing those ults and giving us the firepower that we really want to see. I mean, that's a crazy round for them to have won, given the fact that it was one of those like half by janky things. They knew that the flank was coming in, so they keep an eye on flank watch. They managed to get a few kills, bonus or upgrade up to rifles off of the dead bodies. And finally, for the first time in the series, they have forced Project X down onto a save. This is the best that they have looked and they've managed to hold on to two of their ultimates. Gonna start off the round here with that cosmic divide to try and create a little bit of chaos. This is not a fake. This is not a drill. They're heading straight through onto the A side. Project X has clocked it, but all they have is pistols. Yeah, with the wall going up as well, Smurfer, I'd love to see us a, a little dash coming in, but oh, Gia picking up two of those cute, huge kills, but Ness on the flank oh. gets two of those kills. Is she able to get a third? Oh. That three! And that's another round on the board for Team Oxygen. They just ran into the blender there, and the blender's name was Ness. Beautifully played. 
all the right angles there. And again, I mean, you, you've got to have that flank watch. Project X try to rotate through sewers to make their way up into the ace. Oh, not sorry, not through sewers. Uh, down ramp to try to make their way back in onto the site. But obviously always pushing as a team because they have the gun disadvantage. Now, however, they have full rifles. They've pulled out almost all of Oxygen's ultimates except for the res. And they know that they themselves have a cosmic divide to try to play with. Oh, yeah, no. there we go. Satchel goes up and very, very good oh, to shut that out. Oh, Oh, well, he'll oh my god, another yeah. one! And now it's up to Roxy, unable to close that out. Two versus three, make that a two versus Yo. two, with Smurfette being wiped off the server as well. You can see how far away these final two players are for Project X. Oh my god, Astra is coming in so big here in this round, but look at Oxygen, they're so scared. They don't want to push in, they have Spike, the A site's completely empty, but they don't know that. Now all they're doing is holding angles, probably just trying to hold on to their weapons. No, but that's impossible because this is like the last round. They have to do something. They either have to push onto site or they have to rotate to B. Now they have just under a minute left to make something happen. Low HP, no ultimates because the res was taken off the board. But Project X don't have ultimates either. This is relatively even footing, but Cinnamon is still alive. Both flashes are still alive for Project X. That's going to make this incredibly difficult for Oxygen. Yeah, I just wish this rotation had kind of happened a little bit sooner because if they had actually rotated all the way towards B, they totally would have sold the fake. But I don't think they're actually going to be able to get that plant down in time as Cinnamon is already up towards heaven. Never mind, she's got the info and relayed that to her teammate. Safe plant coming in, pretty standard in a situation like this. With only 13 seconds that were left before they kind of had no other option there we go cosmic divide comes in flash goes out and pushing through that wall this is absolutely huge wonderful shot there from cinnamon and surely oh no oh that's so big the flash has come up so big yeah but ness, ness she knows where she's planted the spike halfway oh. the sound the sound dampening from the freaking wall are you kidding me no she starts to diffuse but ness doesn't hear it because the sound is dampened from the cosmic divide and so she doesn't even know that she needs to swing out she's like expecting a guiding light or something to come through because she knows that it's a um a sky that's still alive oh my god that that, oh, is, that is heartbreaking a... yeah it is it heartbreaking is. in a situation like that it really is but like I've said it plenty of times yesterday, and I always say it when I play my ranked games as well, pros don't fake. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like you, best case scenario, as soon as you get it at that halfway point, unless they're actually swinging or, you know, making use of their util or anything like that, you have no reason to actually come off the diffuse. But yeah, very well played from both of those teams. But I can't help but feel like if they hadn't run away with that much of the lead at the very start of the game, there could have been potential to pull it back a little bit more. But I'm hoping we see some more aggression going into the next map. And what's really interesting about that is that this was Project X's map pick, which means that Oxygen got to pick side. And so you kind of think to yourself, well, had they chosen to start on attack, maybe they would have had more of a buffer zone once they swapped sides. Although that being said, if they'd started on attack, that would have given Smurfette a chance to get the defender operator, which maybe that's what they were trying to avoid. There, there are a lot of caveats here when it comes to picking sides and picking maps. But our next map is going to be Icebox, and that's really going to be an interesting one. Yeah, I cannot wait. Maybe we'll see Smurfette get on that orb that I have been dying to see and witness myself firsthand. But yeah, let's throw it to a quick break. We'll be back very, very shortly with our next map.
Hello everybody and welcome back. We're on to our second map now, Icebox. Between these two fantastic teams, we have Oxygen versus Project X over on to our semi-finals. Nari, tell me what you're expecting to see from this map. Well, already we can see that Project X have locked in one of the most common commonly played compositions on Icebox. And interestingly enough, Oxygen are locking into the second, well, not second, but the other most popular composition to be played on Icebox. I love it when that happens. It's literally these two comps and they're like the only ones that you ever see in, in like top tier competitive play. So it makes sense that these two top tier teams, actually, wait, there's a slight difference here. Hold the phone. What Holding is the difference? What, what am I missing? Oh, it's the Sage! Oh yeah. my god! Project X don't have a Sage! What is going on? Ah, uh, okay. So usually you wouldn't you would either have the Rainer or the Killjoy, and then you'd have a Sage in place of that because the Sage is so powerful, particularly over on the B site. This is a, a, a very interesting permutation from Project X, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're gonna play this. Oh my yeah. earth. I think particularly like I myself, I hate playing Icebox without a Sage, especially when that tube area ends up with, you know, kind of you know, nobody covering it, or as soon as one of your players gets taken out onto site, tube almost seems like that area that everybody kind of ends up forgetting about. Mm-hmm. The Sage is so good there. Especially if you like drop some slow orbs in that mid area mm -hmm. and deny some rotations through mid as well. Even if you don't go up tube, it just stops you from going through under towards the B site. So there's a lot of potential that can be used or utilized with the with the sage. But I'm I'm not super anti the Killjoy Rainer either. I think that there's this is a great way to be able to anchor both the A and the B site with the with the Killjoy and the Viper, and then everybody just goes ham in mid. And like you mentioned, speaking of going ham in mid, seems like they're going to do exactly that. Pushing in under tube with the spike in hand. Probably not the finest moment we've seen, but Gia picking up one of those kills over there. And now that just leaves us with Glance to try and defend this spike that's been dropped. Now, see, if they had a Sage, they could have put up a wall. Uh -huh. But <laughs> Glance, very low HP, trying to defend against two players. Too many angles to check. A really good round here from Oxygen, I must say. Despite all of the utility that goes up in mid, they actually managed to get super aggressive and push out and get some really, really important early picks. Unfortunately, the Clutch Meister of Glance wasn't able to bring it home in that previous round. And Oxygen off to a very good start. Yeah, definitely a very good start for them. And... Now, okay, it's not quite the operator I would have loved to see, but she does have a marshal in hand, in the hands of Smurfette and Cinnamon. So let's see if they're able to do a little bit of damage making use of those two guns. This time around, not going to be kind of monkeying through mid. Instead, we're going to be pushing on over to the B site, which is more or less undefended at the moment. Which is very surprising to see, but rotations are going to start coming through relatively quickly here from Project X. Yeah, and with no swarms being placed to kind of deny the plant, that your best option at this point is to kind of, yeah, exactly, spam through that smoke and hope for the best, but unfortunately spamming in the wrong area. And now you can see, here you go, you have the Viper uh, posted up, playing off of her lineup, but we have seen in situations where, you know, you have somebody on the flank, that could be, you know, not the greatest thing to rely purely on those lineups. <gasps> oh, Smurfette! Okay, Ripper, just pop off. Riffa, you do. Oh my god. <laughs> like, so I suspect that Smurfette bought the Marshal there because she's kind of building up to the round three operator potentially. And unfortunately, you know, Oxygen just don't peak. So she's not able to get tons of value. She does manage to get one, but we're seeing Oxygen do much better at swinging on one another than we'd seen in the previous map. So they do that there perfectly, swing out of yellow together. And then of course, they've got one more, uh, more towards where the actual uh, attackers attack from, that like B main area further back. And so you've got all of those angles covered, super easy to deal with. Now Project X, they did buy up a little bit in their previous round, invested somewhat. So they come into this, oh my God, they're still able to buy up rifles and immediately that pays off. Yeah, Roxy in close quarters with one of them and 
unfortunately gets taken out as I say that. Simmer, oh, see, this is why it's so important to have somebody either, you know, covering your under tube. Under tube, I feel like, is one of those areas that always, always gets just forgotten about. And they've not even planted the spike yet. There you go, I think um. the rain is going to be going in for a flank to make sure, you know, they don't actually rotate or have a chance to juke us out and make us think that they're going to make their way towards A. Oh, cinnamon power. Manages to get one. Will she get the second? Playing that oh, very, oh. very carefully. Oh, the dismiss is so huge. She gets the information. She knows that the last player is there and she can uh, come that back to the rest of the team. Rainsa all on her own here. And she so heavily pins it in. Cinnamon pushes out, gets the colat. And off the back of the superior weaponry, Project X went out the, the third round. And this was an important one for Oxygen to win because you want to create a bit of a, a buffer zone. You want to create a steam train that, you know, Project X aren't able to close the gap on. And unfortunately for Oxygen, Project X have already begun to close that gap. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just, I'm eager and waiting for Smurfette to get on that operator. But Roxy making use of a Guardian. I don't, I'm not really a big fan of the Guardian, to be honest with you. Oh, I love the Guardian. The one tap potential on there is so powerful. And I mean, if you're, if you're putting that in Roxy's hands, yeah, sure. I think it also comes down to the fact that they lost a few players in that previous round. So it's difficult to buy up to proper weaponry. And the range on the Guardian is massive as well. But I've just heard an Empress getting popped from Project X all the way on the other side of the map. That Flurk, Cinnamon and Smurfette, they're getting ready to flank all the way around. Oxygen not even going to be given a chance to plant here. Yeah, and see, that placement of the wall so unfortunate for them because the swarm grenades actually went down behind the wall, so they couldn't even shoot that out. But I like the fact that they actually have somebody watching their flank and kind of covering it. I believe that's another swarm grenade being popped, Shock. and out goes, <laughs> out goes the kill. Oh, Ness, absolutely Ooh. beautiful. Ness putting in work here, yeah. and remember that Ness was playing Astra in the previous round. Yeah, she is on the jet, putting up the numbers. Oh my god, oh, great drop work! <gasps> Roxima! Holy cow! She comes from the sky in the previous game onto the Viper here and absolutely clutches it out there with the sickest spray transfer that we've seen all day. That was nuts. That was so clean. Super well played. And now that's what Oxygen needed. I kind of mentioned that they wanted to create that huge buffer zone that difference in score and it was looking a little bit dodgy there but they managed to win out that round which means that they're able to buy rifles and they force project x back down onto a save the most powerful weaponry that project x is going to have here once again are going to be sheriffs smurfette going in for orb control there she's one point away from having that blade storm it's unlikely she's going to get it online in this round but oh boy if she does I think especially when you take damage from a shock dart like that, down to 50 HP already. Of course, Oxygen also have a res available to them, should they decide they need to use it, but you up against an eco. Oh, never mind. As I was about to say, they won't need to. I feel, it seems like they don't want to take their chances in a situation like this. Rain stuff picking up one of those kills, and Cinnamon dismissing the way that was huge, but with no bullets in hand. Oh, that's oh, so unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunately, Roxy was on a little bit of a flank then. Before she has a chance to actually get into position to create any sort of a crossfire, Oxygen go in very aggressive. You, you said it was an anti-eco, so, you know, it was unlikely that they would commit that res. But yes, they don't want to leave anything to chance. They want to make sure that they are going to win out that round. Now, however, Smurfette's got the operator in her hand. She's finally oh, yeah. been able to it's save time. up to that. Oh yeah, she's got Bladestorm as well. She got that at the end of the previous round. There's also Lockdown and Viper's Pit, but Oxygen have like a collection of ultimates to work yeah. with as well. And if they decide to drop the Lockdown, there's no Hunter's Fury to try to get rid of it. Immediately, we're going to see Viper's Pit getting dropped on the A site. They're going to shut that down, but Oxygen not even moving towards A. They're pushing through mid. Uh, I like it. I like the mid push, and I bet they're definitely regretting not having a sage. As I say, that glance managing to pick up one of those kills. Three versus three now, and in comes another Viper ult. Counter Viper's pit here, and it actually cuts off rotations from A to B, which is an interesting decision to make. 
considering the spike is still moving towards B, like this would be the perfect time to move over towards the A site to try and plant the spike there because all of Project X are still alive here on site. Smurfett still has the operator. That's her second up kill of the round. Only two players left alive here for Oxygen. Make it one. Oh, dearie me. Proxima gonna have to come up huge. She did it in the previous round. It's a good start. That's gonna get rid of the Viper's Pit, but it's not enough. Cinnamon cleans it up. I love how Smurfette doesn't even need like line of sight. I'm pretty sure that Viper's <laughs> Pit was just up and she just fired and killed someone. Just, just Smurfette things. Yeah, it's all about prediction and it works out. And again, I, I want to just come back to that Viper's Pit because it covered so much of that, that top section on the, on the B side. So at least it covers that little bit. But again, if you know the walls themselves are bangable and you know more or less where it is in the Viper's Pit, you can get value out of that. I would have liked to have seen them rotate. Yeah, I would have loved to see her rotate, but I guess at that point they kind of just decided, you know, what we've already committed, we might as run. well just go all in. And there we go. Killjoy goes down as well. Kind of, you'd think, edging them off of the site. But if Smurfette decides to stay towards heaven, there is a little corner in which she'd be safe from that Killjoy, but decides, you know what, I'm best off sticking with my teammates. That leaves sites open for the taking, but Swarm Grenades being placed and popped. Very good placement of that to kind of buy them some more time. Interesting that the Hunter's Fury didn't come out. It didn't come out to stop the lockdown. It didn't come out to stop the, the plant either. So they've just kind of held on to it forever. And now Smurfette down to two players left alive. Pops the blade storm, gets nothing from it. Roxy left to try to clutch it out, but only able to get two kills there. Feels like a bit of a misplay from Project X. However, now they're able to buy again. Oh my god, Nest all the up. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see this. I kind of had questions about the Astra op uh, on Split, but I'd forgotten that Ness also plays Jet. So it kind of makes sense that she would be the op player of the team. Now Cinnamon's going to be picking up a Marshall. Marshall versus Operator. I really hope that that happens. I want to see that battle. I want to see who comes out on top. I'm not entirely sure if you will see that take place because it does seem like she's going to be posted up towards top mid, making sure they don't get flanked from behind them. And the recon giving that little bit of info. There's two sets of uh, shots being fired, so they know that there's at least two of them sat towards that long area. And now you can see the rotation coming in from the Rainer as well. A little bit more aggression being shown from the Killjoy as well. And moving over towards A site. It's interesting that you've got two of your anchor players so close to one another. Obviously, the Viper on the A site and the Killjoy up in mid. The rest of the team is all the way on the other side of the map. And Oxygen. Both teams, in fact, have held on to their Hunter's Furies. So I'd be interested to see if it does actually come out this time around. Of course, we know that it's been a bit of a weird buy for Project X. Not able to actually buy up to rifles. So unlikely that we see those ults come out. They're going to have to just make do with what they have available. Oh, Rith are going huge with that. That was great for them. And see, the Swarm Grains were popped a little bit early, uh, allowing them to actually get that spike plant down safe and sound. Let's see what Ness can do with the orb. She's still holding the flank, unaware that they have, in fact, rotated away to join the rest of their teammates. Cinnamon playing incredibly sneaky right now. Up above them in Ness, but does she get spotted? If not, they definitely heard that. There we go, the Hunter's Fury comes in. Rainstone goes huge with two of those kills. Smurfette trades her back and takes incredible amount of damage from not only the Hunter's Fury, but also those two Swarm Grenades as well. There's some questionable ultimates coming out there. I think that the initial Hunter's Fury from Project X was to try to create space for an attempt at a defuse. But unfortunately, with so many oxygen players left alive and the fact that they have a counter Hunter's Fury to just aim at the spike, there was no way that Smurfette was actually going to be able to get that defuse. Once again, Project X forced down onto an eco, an oxygen looking so much better than what we saw previously it's quite clear to see why this was their map pick they have such good control of everything that's going on here no matter what direction they choose to take project x just do not know how to answer it yeah it does seem like this is a bit like their stomping ground right they know exactly what they're doing they know their setups and they're just kind of running away with this one 
And we're gonna see that huge gap in, you know, round difference and kind of running with it a little bit. Don't want to leave too much of an advantage, but that Viper Spit does go down to kind of slow them down slightly. There's a uh, good placement of another one as well to kind of attempt to clear out around yellow. It does miss ever so slightly. See, I would have been interested to see a rotation here from Oxygen. Push back or pull back and push over towards the A site instead. But they know that it's an anti eco. They know they have the advantage. Cinnamon actually manages to get one kill, dismisses away. But it's just a firing range for Oxygen. Roxy, that was, that was so clean. I wish I could get one taps like that, honestly. <laughs> they just make it look so easy. Ness holding the deep angle here, making sure that if anybody pushes out of this tin can, they're not gonna survive long. <gasps> oh! Roxy tries to wait for it, fires off a shot, but the operator just too strong there. Cinnamon walks through the Viper wall, a little bit of decay, and it's just clean up for Ritha. Another round here for Oxygen. We could be looking at a 10 2 half. Similar to what we saw on the first map, but in like the complete reverse fashion. However, Project X are able to actually buy up this round. They're back in the game, at least for now. They've got a lockdown available, try and deny any sort of ingress onto site. But the rest of their ultimates are quite a ways away from actually coming online. And Oxygen have a lockdown of their own. We might even see that Venn diagram come out. Yeah, look at that stack towards that A site as well. I'm wondering if they're going to play that quite aggressively. Hopefully, the Sova drone would have given just that little bit of info. Okay, there is a Sova towards Long and footsteps coming through as well. Not surprised if this Killjoy ult goes down to buy her some a little bit more time. Taking very good control of the space here on B once again. And obviously a nice little lurk out in mid. But instead of going on a full flank, is opting to come back, meet up with the rest of the team. They've got the Vipers wall to give a little bit of cover, but of course there's this weird little bug here where it doesn't fully cover that line of sight. The Venn diagram does come out, however, and it's going to force so many of these players back. And while the spike has been planted, that it's a little bit of a precarious situation for Oxygen here. But with the lockdown of their own, they actually managed to buy back some space. So for the moment, it's just a one-for-one -one trade. Yeah, it's just a shame that that flank didn't Ooh. come in a tiny bit quicker. Ness and Ritha both going huge, picking up two of those kills. Taking a little bit of damage from that Viper Spit as well. Now Smurfette, let's see what you can do and cover your teammate. Unfortunately, unable to do so, but as I mentioned before, Prozo fail. Unless they do. <gasps> oh. There was no way I think that Kim would have actually been able to get that defuse because it was just the smoke covering her. So yeah. Proxima would have just had to spam through. What was interesting to me was how Oxygen just kind of ran in onto site and just ran into Project X's crosshairs. Okay, it, you know, Project X weren't able to clutch it out in the end there. And if Kim had been able to win that 1v1, then huge. But unfortunately, they just couldn't. So it doesn't end up being too terrible. And they're still able to full buy up, so not the end of the world, but it was quite a risky decision to make. Now Project X once again back down onto the save, two marshals. Oh, okay. Bladestorm doing things. Who needs a marshal, I guess? Just Bladestorm things, right? Yeah, pretty much. Cinnamon holding quite a tight angle here, trying to get info, but without taking too much of that damage. You can see how aggressively Smurfette is actually placed up towards A. So at this point, they should kind of have the info. Okay, they're either going to be working their way towards mid or through mid or making their way through towards B long. You can see this now. Cinnamon falling back. Smart decision, but I'm not sure if she's going to be able to actually get out of this one alive. As I say that, she picks up one of those kills. Can she make it a second? Unfortunately not. Ness is very quick with those shots. All of them tagged up, so they have the info. There are two of them. It's a yellow. decent trade, and there's a nice little flank coming in from Smurfette as well, who still has that blade storm up. Only got the one kill. And Oxygen being very careful, despite this being an eco round, they know they don't want to. <gasps> Underest oh my god, Clots! Oh my god, Clots! Oh, I, I love you so much. <laughs> I can't oh believe they didn't goodness. check that angle. They just pushed through the smoke or through the wall without even turning back to look. Wow. I mentioned that Clutch 
you know, Glance was the Clash Meister. It's taken a while for it for it to come through, but there we go. A beautiful 3k in a thrifty round secured. Smurfette has her operator again. Cinnamon has an Empress. We're so close to Glance and Kim having their ults. And yes, Oxygen are pretty close to a couple of ultimates as well. They have Viper's pet, so they can potentially shut down line of sight from that operator. We might we might see that 9-3 half. I'd love to see a Venn diagram of the Viper ults this time. Maybe towards <laughs> B. Because I never actually got to see the full force of it, you know? Because when we saw it last time on that A site, it was uh, elevation and all sorts of things came into play mm -hmm. there. But you can see A site wide, wide open for them. Free for the taking and nice slow rotation coming in from the Sova. Smurfette has seen the rotation. Pulled that out to her teammate and now you can see slowly the Rainer is deciding, okay, I think it's time for me to start backing up. Drones trading back and forth, going in to get that info. It's a good there. fake, but oh, oh, shuts down the wall before it can even happen. Oh, Smurfette missing that second shot is pretty massive, but thankfully she's able to get away. Now that Viper's Pit's gonna come down. Actually, that goes down to the Viper's Pit. No, there we go. Proxima goes down. Viper's Pit is off of the board, but Ness is absolutely popping off, trading back and forth down to a 2v1 situation. Yeah, but Kim clutches it out with the last two kills on the round. Oh my goodness. Just pure chaos. That was all sorts of hectic. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Eight four yes, half. It it's what I what I generally call the best of a bad situation. Project X can definitely come back from this, but obviously Oxygen gonna be doing their damnedest to not allow that. But we need to bear in mind that Oxygen's defense was not fantastic on Split. That being mm -hmm. said, Split was Project X's map pick. This is Oxygen's map pick. So hopefully they've got a plan up their sleeves. We can already see they've picked up two ghosts. So looking to take some long range battles there. And Smurfette straight into the Sheriff. Looking to try and pop some heads as quickly as possible. I always like kind of examining the difference between which guns get bought in Crystal Realms to see how they're going to play them. Look at that aggression coming in from Lung. They are, they are on an absolute street okay and what you don't want to do is start slowing the pace down and then overthinking it and getting in your own head again you can see gia up close and personal one right click is all it took four bullets remaining is she able to pick up a kill onto smurfette as well does manage to do so if you can hear somebody else on make the oh my goodness gia is going absolutely huge right now and her teammate there for the support pick up the kill on roxy that was super super clean a nice solid start to the round there, exactly what Oxygen needed. I like the fact that they went super aggressive instead of, you know, holding back passively. I felt like some of their passivity on the split defense was part of what kind of worked against them. And of course, with this being a pistol round, it's when you tend to see a lot more of that aggression than what you see on any other round. So glad to see that it's happening. Now the question becomes, do they continue with that? Now that they're able to force up a little bit, get some better guns, they know that they have an advantage, and nope, it looks like we're back to just playing it low and slow, wait for Project X to walk in, and then, you know, retake, create some angles, potentially get on flank watch. Ness just shut down Smurfette as soon as she, before she even has a chance to dash in onto site. That works. Yeah, and now Drone goes in as well to get the info. They are swarming their way towards a site. You see the rotations coming in. Cinnamon has spotted Ritha below her. And Ritha, how did you not know the shots were coming from? That was absolutely dire. Gia picks up two of those kills. And Kim, that, they made that round just fly by. Yeah, made very short work of that round. I wonder, is Ness going to go for an up here? Because she had a... Yep. yep. She had a sheriff in the last round. I figured there was a save for that. Oh no, come on. Don't don't play with my heart. Uh, all right, they're just gonna bonus. <laughs> She's that, teasing. That's She's good making too, you wait. Honestly. Full rifles though for Project X, as expected. Nothing new there. I, I keep watching. I'm, I'm, I keep hoping that she's going to change her mind at the last second, but I think yeah. that they're going to try and hold on to their economy as much as possible so that if they do lose this round, they'll still be able to buy in the next. That will make a huge difference. Yeah, Roxy did hear that wall going up. Here's the footsteps as well. I don't actually think they checked this angle. Oh, oh my God. The patience. I love Roxy. the patience. Roxy. Okay. That's done. <laughs> Oh, that's just BM. That's, that's so unfortunate. <laughs> the 
the problem with that patience is that had she decided to get the kill onto Ness earlier, then her teammate doesn't die there. So it's a little bit of a misplay. You want to have that patience, but look at this. So many kills go over in favor of Oxygen, and this would have been a 3v3 had she taken that shot a little bit earlier on in the round. It is a little unfortunate, but there's still an opportunity for Project X to turn this around. Of course, Oxygen not going to want to allow that to happen. Good start there from Cinnamon. She managed to pick up a rifle. Glance gets traded out, and now Cinnamon versus the world, not able to clutch it out. Oxygen bringing us up to an 11-4 round. Man, oh man, I, you know, at the start of the day, you mentioned that it could be maybe a 2-0 sort of affair, but I'm starting to think we're going all three maps, and I'll tell you what's going to happen in the third map, we're going to go overtime. Is that just like your standard prediction? No, actually, last time it was the second map going overtime. This time I feel like it's third. Wait, actually, was it? I don't know. I don't know. Usually I'm very much a, no, it's not going to go overtime. <laughs> But I feel like, I don't know, overtimes is kind of where it's at, right? The pressure's on, nerves might get the better of some people. You see tactics being changed up quite a bit. And I feel mm -hmm. like pe people a lot of the time just kind of get in their own head. We're going to start this round off immediately with the Empress getting popped. There's a lot of firepower and potential on that one. Smurfette's immediately being caught out here. I actually see some of that utility coming through to try and get rid of her, but... Oh, she pulls up both of those shock dots. Good stuff. Ness, however, holding it down here on B. Roxy gets taken out. That's not a good start for Project X. And this is, again, you know, on, on Split, when they were on attack, they were super aggressive. They were consistently just dashing straight in as Cinnamon and uh, Smurfette playing off one another. But here, they're playing so much more slowly. They realize they can't just give away rounds for free. So they have to be very, very careful about how they approach each and every round. Yeah, you can see Cinnamon here making good use of that little gap through the Viper wall. Has called out to her teammates that there is one underneath Heaven as well. Hoping they'll be able to maybe do a little something with that, but never mind, not when Proxima is on the case. Cinnamon gets one of those kills. Three versus three now. Tagged up by the drone as well, so they have the info on where she is. Gets the second one. It's, it's Ness against the world. Oh, two versus one with an operator. It's one of the yeah. worst positions to be in. They've actually run down the clock exceptionally well. That's great work from Project X. So they've forced Ness off of position because she wants to maintain control of that operator. If Oxygen were on attack, you definitely see her either swap to the classic or, you know, swap to a rifle and, and take those fights. But because they're on defense... They know that there's not enough time to plant this uh, to defuse the spike, so there's no sense in trying to take that fight. So instead, mm -hmm. just hold on to the operator, live to fight another day. Now they're calling the timeout because Project X have pulled more rounds than what they're comfortable with in this half. They know that they've got some ults online. We've still got the Viper visual bug there, so there is not currently a Viper pit up. Don't, do not get just confused. Uh, but there is a Blade Storm and a Lockdown available and no Hunter's Fury to counter, which of course they know. They know that Project X don't have those ultimates. In fact, they know that Project X don't have any ultimates. And now it's how do we, once again, they're in that situation. How do we leverage this into two consecutive round wins? Because if they win here, theoretically, they should be able to cripple Project X's economy. But if they lose this round, then Project X are on a bit of a snowball. Now, if you if you are Oxygen in a situation like this, what kind of tactic would you be opting for? What would you want to be changing up? Hmm, I think possibly the level of their passivity. Mm -hmm. Try to just push out a little bit more, create those flanks and crossfires. Don't allow Project X to just walk in. And they've got some phenomenal agents. Like I said, they've got one of the most common compositional lineups that you can possibly have on this map start using that utility a little bit more deny more of those sight lines deny more of those access points yeah i think especially when you know that you oh, know no, smurfette yes. doesn't have the orb in hand either so you know show that aggression while you can before they get the heavy hitters in their hands too I love that deep angle from Ness, and had she stayed there a second longer, she would have been able to get a kill there. But instead, the firing r range is happening over on the B side, so she thinks, okay, I'm going to need to rotate now. And 
and Spike's not even there. The Spike's still chilling in mid. They haven't committed yeah. at all, but they keep making this noise on the B site to make it seem like that's where it's going to come in. The flank is going through. Gaia is not expecting someone to be on that site. And Cinnamon will get a second kill on the round here. And this is looking like it's going to be a Project X round win. This is the opposite of what I wanted to see from Oxygen. Yeah, the, they sold the fake beautifully, to be honest with you. At first, I wasn't so sure when I saw how far back the spike was and the fact that, you know, they were already on site, but worked out uh, amazingly for them. Now, there's still a numbers advantage here for Project X, but they do still need to be careful because obviously Oxygen still have that operator available. Use the drone to try and get some information. Ness will follow it out. Nice utilization there of the Nano Swarm to deny a potential defuse. Time is running out though. Taps the spike. Do they have any more utility? I believe it was taken half. Yeah, it was up half. Oh no! Oh, oh you needed to save. At least one of those smokes maybe would have done it. Well, there you go. I mean, they knew where the spike was planted. I think that they... So you get it to halfway and diffuser dies. I believe it was um, Breather that was busy diffusing there. And then to get back in onto the site, you've got all of that post-plant utility. Kim is just like plowing those mollies on top of the spike. And yes, there's all of those smokes there, but Project X knew where they had planted. So they just needed to spam through and they would be able to get those kills. And all the smokes come down. Last player left alive is Ness, who's now lost the operator, which the whole team has been forced down onto an eco. Again, not what they were hoping for, but this is a great start for Project X to kind of keep clawing their way back in. If they lose this next round, it's it's danger time. Oh, the timing of that oh. Ness going huge with that blade storm in hand, getting two of those kills on Roxy and Co. Oh, Make Glance. that three, getting another one onto Lance as well. And now they have Spike down, and things are looking pretty dire. Why does Oxygen only do this when they are on an eco round? Like, look at how much damage they've done on this eco. They've taken down three of Project X's players. And, they, it, I mean, they, they show no signs of slowing down yet. They've got beautiful angles covered here. Yeah, you go. Last person left. It's just going to be Cinnamon, who is now dead. Like, come on. I want to see this aggression more when you actually have rifles. Like, too many teams do this. They have an eco round, and they're like, all right, well, we're just going to monkey out and see what happens. And then they win, and I'm like... Why are you not being that aggressive when you have bigger guns and you can take those fights more consistently? Now, okay, now Oxygen are on match point. But if they can repeat what they just did, then they win. They win this map. It's that simple. I don't think they're... I don't know. Do you think they're going to go in for a risk and maybe play that aggressively? I don't think they will. Now, probably unlikely. Would be nice, but, you know... Let's see how Project X take this, because of course they know that they're on match point as well. If they lose this round, that's it. But if they win it... Oh, that's such a bad start! Oh no! Gets traded back, but Proxima is going to take down Cinnamon. That's the duelist duo of Project X down for the count. And somehow they're going to have to make this work with a numbers disadvantage and no duelists. Yeah, Viper's ult available to them as well. Maybe we'll see that coming into play as well to kind of secure themselves a site waiting waiting for that you should run oh as i say that there we go killjoy ult goes down as well so at this point you pretty much try and full send it viper ult goes down as well now it's a five versus three rez coming in is very huge for oxygen I do like that there's some potential here for post planting but it's difficult because kim needs to stay in the ultimate in order to keep it up. And Glance doesn't have Hunter's Fury, so they can't use that to deny the defuse. And with Reetha sending in the drone here, gonna find tons of information that they're gonna be able to follow on. Ooh, Lockdown comes in though as well, so that's gonna force them off of their perch. This is it. I think this is where Oxygen win. Oh, they're on the defuse. <gasps> okay, Glance, that was, that was quite something. Wait. Yeah. Oh, one second yeah. left on the clock. It was so close. I, like, I didn't want to speak. I just wanted to hear, do they actually yeah. manage to get that defuse? Because Project X did so well to burn down a lot of the time towards the end of the round there. But Oxygen looking very, very good here on the second map. This is exactly why, I mean, you can tell now why this was their map pick. 
We came from Split, where Project X were absolutely dominant. We move over onto Icebox. Oxygen completely flipped the script. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible performance from all of these ladies taking place and, of course, playing in the tournament, particularly Ness. I was pretty impressed with some of her gameplay throughout this map that we just saw. But that takes us on to your favorite map. We're going to go on to Breeze next. So how, how excited are you feeling for this? Are you expecting to see anything in particular going forward onto this third map? A lot of snipers. Mm -hmm. Ness, Cinnamon, uh, Smurfette. Like, we're going to see marshals. We're going to see operators. It's going to be absolute chaos. I doubt we're going to see Sage. Very few teams bring out the Sage. There's far less potential to actually take advantage of her kit on that map just because of how massive it is. But, like, Sky, Hell yeah, she's in. You know, Reyna and Jet, very, very likely. Maybe a Yoru. We saw some of that yesterday. Yeah. I would not be opposed to seeing that again today. Yeah, I would love to see some Yoru gameplay coming into this third map. But do not go anywhere because we will be back after a very short break for our third map.
Hello and welcome back to Birds of Prey episode two, where we've been watching Oxygen and Project X go head to head in the semi finals. And now we move on to our third map, Breeze. Talk to me, Nauri. This You said this is your stomping grounds, this is your favorite map. Tell me about <laughs> comps and what you're looking forward to see. Well, what's interesting, so I was talking about how I didn't really expect the Sage to come out, and Roxy is immediately locking into the Sage pick. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she's going to do with that. Cypher has also been pretty staple on this map. I think just given the size, he tends to have a little bit more playability than Killjoy, for example. You know, if you move to the other side of the map, well, and all of your utility is just completely useless. Whereas with uh, Cypher, it doesn't matter where you are. You can access your camera, your tripwires are up as long as you're alive. The Viper, of course, staple here on Breeze. And the Duelist Duo, we saw how powerful they were on this uh, Sky and Jet combination on Split earlier. So likely to see some more of that powerhousing. I think that maybe Oxygen's composition leans a little bit more into what I was expecting. So the, the Sova instead of the Sage. The rest of the composition, yeah, pretty standard. Um, I think that it's, it's you know, near mirror matchups, aside from the one change there. But I do favor Oxygen's comp a bit more. Yeah, especially with that Sova Recon being able to give you the info, particularly towards the back of sight as well, when you shoot that through, kind of using that info to determine, okay, how, how up close and personal do we want our jet and our sky to be when they kind of dash on in and make use of those flashes. And of course, that dog as well. I'm excited. I'm excited for this third map and I'm I'm hoping we see some more AWP action. I feel like I haven't seen enough of what I was promised at the start of the day. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, not every day can be an AWP ace day, right? But I think that we will see a little bit more of that sniper action here on this map. The other interesting thing to note is that it's Glance on the Cypher. And of course, she is quite known for being a, a Sova demon. So to see her swapping it up onto the Cypher here for this map, looking forward to seeing what she's going to be able to do here. I like the tripwire placement as well. This is less of a... like They're basically playing to deal with the site. They're not playing for information, uh, you know, with, given the, the trap setup as it is right now. But for the moment, Project X, I actually just heading on over to the A side. <laughs> Yeah, you see the wall goes up there. They have heard the sound cue that they're taking the orb as well. They push out onto site. That flash goes huge, but unfortunately flashes her teammate as well. Cinnamon picking up the first kill. Proxima very quick to trade that one out. Spike already being planted and in a great position for them to defend as well. Numbers are evened out here though. With the spike having been planted, it's all about holding these angles. Oh. Project X need to hold the line until Glance can get into position. There she is. She manages to get a nice little dink there. And Gaia, the last person alive on her team, she can't step into that orb or she'll die. And there's the cleanup from Glance. And that's it. The, the immediate 30 decay had she stood into that orb, that would have been it. Tickets. So she has to swing out again. It's just fantastic utilization of the utility there. Yeah, you can see the... Uh, the... Sniper's already coming into play and, you know, Spectre's in hand, pretty standard stuff. I'm hoping we see, you know, the run and gun, the pushing in through cave and kind of hoping for the best as it were. <laughs> Especially when you have flashes available to you, like on that sky. Again, we're going to be going for a solid A hit here. The wall is already up. There's a marshal already out in full force on the field here, but with that smoke screen in the way, denies a lot of sight lines, makes it really difficult to get some value. Information's been given away that they have already pushed their way onto site, but Cinnamon and Smurfette going in super, super aggressive here. Unfortunately, for Smurfette is gonna get taken down immediately by a stray shot from the Marshal. But Kim trades it back and in double time. Oh my goodness, it's so back and forth. This is a really, really scrappy fight here. But it, it just has to be about maintaining control of the spike. And Gaia, last person left alive, manages to get one. Needs to kill two more. Glance has a hero rifle, though. Gonna make that very, very difficult. Lineups being used as well by that Viper, but Ooh. just narrowly missing out. And as the smoke goes down, that makes 
Easy work for Glance to pick up that kill there. And if Glance hadn't done it, the snake bite would have done the trick just as well. Mm -hmm. Again, just really great utilization of utility. And that's what you want to see here on Breeze. It's one of those maps where it does come up so big. I mean, let's face it, lineups are everywhere. But because of the size of Breeze, it makes it all that more important to be able to execute those. Now, mm -hmm. again, Oxygen taking that time out very, very early on in the round to be or in the in the map to be taking a time out, but because they know that they're already behind and they don't want to give Project X that runaway lead, much like what happened on Split earlier, they need to kind of reassess. This is their rifle round, but they did buy into Marshalls in the previous round. I'm not sure how that's going to you know, affect the economy coming into this one, but realistically speaking, they should be able to have full rifles. They'll know that they're going to have a gun advantage. Maybe. You know, like I said, they forced up a little bit. Oh, there we I, go. Okay, they actually are able to buy up. Very nice. I'm actually a very big fan of this. I love the fact that, you know, they have been adapting and trying out new and different things since that first map that we saw. And I like the fact that, you know, they're not actually letting them get away with like a runaway lead, as it were, with the round count. But let's see what exactly they've decided to change up and whether or not it's going to work in their favor. Well, bearing in mind that Project X having lost a few players in that previous round forced to buy as well. Now, they're not going to buy Spectres because that's just pointless. So they've also basically got full rifles apart from just one SMG. So it's almost equal footing here. A round where Oxygen probably feel like they would have the advantage, it's actually just equalized. And that might, you know, put a spanner in the works. There we go. Seeker goes out to give that info, but the tripwires unfortunately slowing it down slightly. Four versus five. Now Spike attempting to be planted, but Gear's been way too good on the site, picking up two of those kills. Unfortunately, doesn't make it a third, but her teammate Ritha there to clean up shop. And you know what? The pause always always works wonders. Yep. Give yourself a, a slight little mental reset after losing two rounds and. I said that they were on more or less equal footing in terms of gun power, but in terms of utility on site, Oxygen play off of that really, really well, playing off of the smokes and the tripwires. I think the tripwires actually come up so huge there as well, giving away a lot of information and lighting up players as they move, uh, try to push in onto the site, particularly when it is Cinnamon, because like I said, she's playing the, the sky like a duelist, and uh, you can definitely you know, use that to your advantage. Oh, that was unfortunate. I thought the two dogs were going to kind of butt heads. But now Kim has the info. There is one up towards the top of tube. And I'm surprised she's not actually watching this. So fair caught in the middle of a reload is a little bit unfortunate there. But guiding lights get traded out. And this, of course, is an eco round for, you know, oxygen. So not ex oh, sorry, for, for Project X. So not expecting too much to come out of this. Yeah, again, I'm pretty surprised that, you know, they weren't actually watching up from the top of tube, but it doesn't seem like it really matters. Ness picks up two of those kills, and Proxima there to the helping hand. Nice little bit of a healing towards the end of the round there, just to, you know, just for the fun of it. Didn't get to use it earlier on, so we'll use it now. I always do that whenever my teammates, like, at the end of the round, they can't say that I didn't do anything to help them. I'm like, what, what do you mean? I healed you. Hello. <laughs> Perfect. As a sage main, I can relate. <laughs> Cinnamon, unfortunately, just going to have an SMG. So <laughs> I was about to say how she might have to play this duelist sky a little bit more carefully. But look at her. She's right up against the barrier. She's getting ready to just go full ham on the B site, which is, you know, great because there's no one on B. No tripwires to speak of. There is a cam up in the corner, though, so they might be expecting a push through that way. Snakebite's going to come out to try and deny that. And we actually see a little bit of damage going through there. Not a hell of a lot. is going to try and hold down the site all on her own. Manages to get one. It's immediately traded back. Spike is being planted. The wall is up to deny some of those sight lines. And Oxygen now need to find an ingress onto the site. Ritha does still have that drone to work with. Hopefully we see that coming into play. There we go. We have it for the info. One more of those bolts available to her as well if it doesn't get shot out. But unfortunately, you know, still has a recon to work with as well to make use of that info. There we go. Assisting a teammate. That's huge. Absolutely huge from them. Assisting one another. Cinnamon gets one of those kills. One versus two. 
Oh dear, can she do this with 5 HP? Unfortunately not, but I loved that round. To a, like It was played perfectly, making use of the drone to give you that info, following awesome. up with the recon as well, when you know your teammate is so close up against them, and allowing the Cypher to pick up two kills there. I feel like part of the problem is on the composition that project x have chosen to run here it is just the, the one difference in the sage but i feel like you're giving up so much so you no longer have that drone to play off of you don't have those shock dots to help with your post plants uh, you don't have the recon dot to give you that little bit of extra information as well and th those are things that oxygen are using exceptionally well to you know create extra space for themselves and they have the sky as well so like i, I spoke a little bit earlier about how you, know, you can make up for some of that deficit with the sky but not all of it i i uh, that shot literally honestly took my breath away i started coughing and i had to mute my mic oh my goodness <laughs> that was that has never happened before damn that was impressive i saw the like 2k spray down and i was like it literally took my breath away anyways we're good i'm still alive <laughs> i'm glad to hear it because solo casting is difficult <laughs> <laughs> and oxygen on a bit of a tear here like so this is a bit of a joke uh, about both the male team and the female team of 10 star but i always kind of meme about how they're a breeze team because they tend to do really well on breeze sorry they're an icebox team so that previous loss was a bit ooh, sketchy and um i was expecting them to you know, possibly start to turn it around here, given that this was their map pick, and it's not going as expected. Oh, Ness missing the shot. That gives away information that, hey, there's an operator here, and oh my god, Smurfette, what a beautiful opener. She just manages to survive with 5 HP, but she's not going to be surviving for too much longer. Oxygen again have such good control of this map. Oh my goodness, and Project X, okay, this was an eco round, but they're just not finding any footing onto site. Yeah, that was unfortunate for them, but take a look at the ults real quick, and they have got a little bit more wiggle room, especially with the full rifle by coming into play. Ness on the op as well, still plenty of economy to work with on the side of Oxygen. Now that they're back up to rifles as well, they at least have some firepower to match. Well, they've got Neural Theft, which can give a little bit of information, which might be imperative because that's been what their composition has been lacking. You know, on Split, they made up for the lack of Sova by just having that double flash powerhouse composition. Here, it feels like they're missing out on so much utility. They might just drop the Viper's Pit here, though. You know, maintain control of the site so that they can get that spike down. Use that smoke screen to give them... So yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. Plant the spike here, drop the Viper's Pit hopefully maintain control of the site yeah spray's going down left right and center and there we have it hunter's fury coming into play to kind of push them off even further from the site making sure that nobody is on that spike and doesn't have it in hand just yet there we go they have a beautiful swing coming into play there all of those kills doing absolute you know all of those players doing absolute work to secure those kills Despite the Viper's Pit coming in to try and deny sightlines, Oxygen still just completely shut them down. Project X looking a little lost. I mean, they, they started off this series incredibly strong on Split. It was a 10-2 half. And as the series has progressed, they've just started looking more and more disjointed. You know, they, they haven't been able to find their footing. Every time they get in onto site, Oxygen have the answer. Even if they're only using one or two ultimates to fight back, it's enough. Project X, oh. <laughs> nice. Good utilization there uh, of the Trailblazer to deny information. Again, that information starving, so powerful. And Ness takes down some effect in mid. This looks like it's probably just gonna be another round that Oxygen run away with. Yeah, Viper Spit still available to her if they want to try and maybe deny a little bit of a plant, but positioning of it not the not the greatest we've seen. I know it. Spike going down. And now that info coming into play, right? Now four versus four. Slight advantage with the info gathering. Glance gets wiped out by Ritter. And Roxy alone on site with her teammate, unfortunately gets taken out. Now Cinnamon, oh dear. What was Cinnamon looking at? 
She's like staring off into the abyss. The travel time on that. Oh, it's not enough. There was actually so much damage coming through there. She survives with a sliver of HP, but it's just not enough to secure that uh, denial of the defuse. Good attempt, good attempt. But another round where Oxygen just had the number. That was, of course, an eco round again. And Project X economy looking very, very dire. They've expended almost all of their ultimates. All they have now is a res. They're so far away from anything else. What kind of works in their favor is that Oxygen are in a similar boat, but unfortunately, the longer Ness has this operator on the board, the more that scoreline is going to run away. We might just see a complete flipping of the scripture, 10 2 half in favor of Oxygen. Project X needs to start putting points on the board, and they need to do it now if they want to have any sort of a competitive second half. Yeah, as you say, that Smurfette actually managing to pick up one of those kills onto the sofa, denying that gathering of further information. Gear unable to get one of those kills, and now that allows B site to be wide open for them. And I think, I think they've cracked the case. I think they know that that is wide open and free for the taking. It's always when I say, well, now they need to start getting points on the board that they start doing that. Unfortunately, though, <laughs> that's cinnamon going down. Still a numbers advantage for Project X, yeah, and Ness still has the operator. So they're going to be holding down these sites, but of course they have to aggress in. They can't play this too far back unless they go for a save, and it's far too early for that. So they need to be getting in onto the site as quickly as possible. Oh, oh Ness versus Smurfette. Oh, no! Oh. Smurfette just does not have the angle there. Now it's Roxy versus the world. And it's oh. get a little bit of... Oh, the collat through the wall is huge. Doesn't realize that Ness is right, right behind her. Ness right has a chance to get away. Is she going to be able to get the kill oh. onto her? Yes, in the middle of the reload. Roxy will clutch out the round there. She's going to die to the spike, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, oh, she, she manages to survive it. Perfect timing. I was really hoping she'd jump up on the wall and then we'd get like a mid-air right click. That would be beautiful. Slow-mo that. Oh my goodness, Smurfette's actually picking up an operator now. <laughs> we got two rounds left in this half and Smurfette's just like, All right, I'm going to take this fight to Ness. And it's going to be a tough one because again, it's an attacking operator and it's so difficult to get value out of that because you're constantly on the move. They need to be aware of the Cypher Cam as well. Look at all of that utility holding down the line on B as well. The A site is heavily encumbered with players locking that down. Kim has found herself very deep up in mid, though. So there's a possibility here that she can potentially... Oh, is she going to check the angle? Oh, Rissa. But... See, I like that. It's, it's not getting greedy, right? It's not getting impatient. It's playing time and, you know, playing it safe. Because you don't want to drop any guns and kind of feed them any kills. Let's yeah, say that. Cinnamon gets yeah. the kill onto Rissa. Now Gia playing uh -oh. up close and personal gets one of those kills once they get... Caught up in that trap wire. Can she do it again? It's a little unfortunate that they didn't check for that trip wire. Oh my goodness, despite the trip wire, Roxy's just like, sit down. <laughs> unfortunately, Glance gets taken out by Ness. Wall goes up to get that spike down, but it's three versus three here. And now, kind of re reverse rolls as Project X find them in a situation where they need to be defending the site. Smurfette's holding onto the back of sight there, trades back and forth once again. It's one versus one, no up. <gasps> An up in a 1v1 is never a good position to be in, but Smurfette with the sickest flick of the day manages to secure that round. My heart like stopped for a second there when I saw uh, Rainsa swing out around. The fact that that managed to connect is just insane. At least you didn't lose your breath and literally start like coughing. <laughs> <laughs> but I know how to breathe, you know. Oxygen just denied me my oxygen, okay? <laughs> That's of all, all I the have things to say that you could have sucked at in life, you chose breathing. <laughs> what can I say? It just happens naturally. <laughs> oh, Ness with a deep angle doesn't really get any value though, and it gives away all the information that the operator is on the site, so seekers are going to come out. That's just that little bit extra info as well. We're going to see Smurfette popping the blade storm, and they are just hightailing it on over to B. But again, they need to be aware because those traps are still there. They need to break them this time and not just kind of walk into it. 
Yeah, I think the tripwires are definitely the difference maker in a situation like this. Gear really good positioning as well. Oh, the spray through oh the God. smoke, the disrespect. Almost had the shock dart go off as well, but the rest comes in. Roxy protecting her teammates. Four versus four now. And we could actually see the spike be planted. Yes, we do. Ness off in hand. Ooh. Oh. Cinnamon, unfortunately, <laughs> loses the 1v1 versus Gaia, though. So once again, we find ourselves on even footing here. Trying to cover all of the angles. Trades again, so still two versus two. Supports and Sentinels versus Supports and Sentinels. Who's going to come out on top? No, caught out with the utility. Roxy manages to get the kill, and now it's Gaia versus the world. She has to kill both. She doesn't have time to get the defuse, even if she does manage to kill both. And no, not going to be given the opportunity. Project X secure themselves five points in this half. Not the 10-2 that we had feared. And now we swap sides. And they're going to have to put up a really big defense here. Because, yes, it's only a two-point difference. And that's just the pistol round. But that, again, will set the tone for the rest of the round. Yeah, you just take a look at, like, the round count. And obviously the number of rounds that have been traded back and forth. And it seems like... They've had a little bit of a light bulb moment. Something seems to have kind of changed in their tactic and their adaptation in playing this map. And I'm really excited to see how they're going to adapt and play it out going into the second half. Oh, so much that needs to be considered here for these teams. It's We're at that kind of do or die stage again, you know? This is the second mm -hmm. half and whichever team loses here gets knocked out. And they have to be content with a third, fourth placing, while the winner of this will go on to the final to face 10-star Nova. Unfortunately, Lux wasn't able to, so a little bit of an update there. 10-star will be in the grand finals. That's, that's going to be a sick final, by the way. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait. And then we have the recon going in, giving info on how many are actually sat towards back sight with Cinnamon Flash and taking in a considerable amount of damage. Surprised we're not seeing them push out a little bit more to kind of secure those kills. Despite being planted, trading back and forth the Fett, low HP as well. Oh, Cinnamon. Beautiful. I'm, su I'm surprised that Cinnamon stayed alive as long as she did. Just Cinnamon doing Cinnamon things. I mean, that was the perfect defense here. Just played really, really well and... Maybe both of these teams just tend to shine a little bit better on their defensive halves. And if that is the case, then it's really impressive that Project X managed to kind of claw their way back in from quite a deficit at the start of the first half. Immediately here, ooh, Glance picking up the Marshall. All right. It's not often that we see her with a sniper rifle, so looking forward to seeing what she does with it. It's not even going to be Smurfette. I think Smurfette and Cinnamon are just going to continue doing their, like, demon terrorizing styles. Mm -hmm. Going to be pushing out relatively aggressively here and try and get a few opening picks. Oh, oh my oh. god! You're nasty, Glance. How do you do it? Yeah, surprise little sniper rifle usage there for you. I know you're happy about that. Now, <laughs> Gear playing in towards mid to make sure she has the info for when players are pushing up to flank her teammates. Glance picks up another kill onto Rainsa as well. Maybe we just need to have Glance on a sniper at all times. Would not so. be against it, to be honest. Um, I'd be kind of here for it. Unfortunately, now Oxygen find themselves with only two players left alive. Nice little flick there from Proxima to take down some of but Cinnamon. Oh, she actually sh could have followed that out, swung on that a little bit harder because it was mid-reload. Now Proxima versus the world, not able to make that one happen. Again, another really solid round here for Project X. They only lose out on one player, and off the back of some amazing martial play, it just absolutely pops off. Yeah, absolutely. You can see rifles going in their hands as well now, so I don't doubt we'll see a little bit more aggression coming into play, and... That shift firepower that we've been going on and on about. I want to see guns blazing. <laughs> I want to see like a big hero play. Well, at least Oxygen now have rifles to work with. Mm -hmm. and they're going to take a nice little split push here. They're not just kind of all running in through mid. Where is this going? Is this just 
chilling in spawn. I guess she's on flank watch. Just in case somebody does try to push up. But the aggressive push is coming out double doors in mid. I mean, this is just going to be so dangerous. What with the utility out, but doesn't actually get taken down. No, she gets rinsed through. They just run straight into Oxygen's crossfires. Now there's only two players left alive here on Project X. Yes, they did have the gun disadvantage, but wow! What a dominant round here from Oxygen. I mean, we said we wanted to see firepower. That's exactly what we just saw there. That was absolutely dominating performance. Perfection. Just played incredibly well there. Like I said, slight gun disadvantage because Project X were on the bonus, but for Oxygen to have come out so strongly just straight out the gate and part of that again is you know project x trying to go for a much more aggressive play and it does work out on maps like split which are a little bit more closed but oh, here on breeze it's a bit more open you've got more places to kind of dodge out and if you swing out then you're you're way out in the open so that does somewhat get punished so now we see these two teams on relatively equal footing seekers are online for project x Get a little bit of information. Oh, well, there you go. Immediately, that gets used. It's going to show that they are two behind and one out towards mid. But again, they've got really good control of the, the map just in general. Have spread themselves out quite nicely to make sure that they can cover every angle and know exactly what movements Oxygen are making. Yeah, and of course, with the Cypher cam that was placed towards B as well, they had the info that... They hadn't actually seen anybody cross over, but as I say, that Kim placing down her Viper spits it. Oh no, that's not what you want to happen when you get flushed. I just always hold down like some sort of key. Don't stand still. <laughs> but now that she has vision, can she get sprayed down? Unfortunately, not two versus five now. Cypher ult goes down to give the info on where the final two players are placed at. I was kind of thinking maybe Project X were a stronger defensive team, but it looks like the real thing here is Oxygen just needed to get some rifles in their hands. 2v4 here, Smurfette and Glance versus the world. <gasps> the timing. I wonder if they possibly try to just... No, they don't save. Uh-uh, we're, we're going in full tilt here. This could end very, very badly. Oh, actually manages to trade it out, but unfortunately it's not going to be enough. Brings us to nine to seven. It's still very, very close, but this is where Project X are put into a very, very dire situation because they're forced down or back down onto a save. And, you know, as soon as we saw Oxygen pick up rifles, they suddenly started to absolutely smack in the last two rounds. Triple Marshall, though, and I swear, if you girls are baiting me, I'm going to stop calling you the best unsigned team in Europe. I said it. Ooh. Better not be baiting me. Baiting talk now. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not baiting me. Good job. I like it. Three marshals. Let's freaking go. <laughs> I'm gonna see a power play coming out. Oh, dashing onto site in the middle of the smoke. Roxy doesn't want to give away her position, but unfortunately, Brainstorm manages to connect those shots and take her out. Cinnamon being completely blinded. Oh, that's so unfortunate. It was looking so promising. Now two versus five once again. Marshall in hand, but just not able to pick up any kills with that and flawless indeed. Not a single player was dropped on the side of Oxygen. I was really, really hoping that the Marshals were going to pop off, but Oxygen play that really close to the vest. They move in straight through onto the B site. They actually forgo mid entirely, which is where those Marshals would have had, you know, the, the higher impact. And instead, just push through onto the B side where there's quite a lot of cover. This time, however, they're swapping things up a little bit, moving over towards the A side. It's a little bit more open, and this might not be the best round to do it because Smurfette's picked up the op again. That being oh said, God. she's holding Sniper's Nest, and no one is pushing into Sniper's Nest. No one is trying to contest that. Mm -hmm. So drone goes in all. Oh, spots out one. So they've got a little bit of information here. Welcome to my but we're ready. There we go. Viper's pick gets dropped. <gasps> Oh there. my! <gasps> no, how did she Do get it. the second? Oh, that's insane. She wasn't even lit up, and she still manages to get the shot there through the smoke. Just the predictive fire. Oh my god! Project X just wipe it up here. And Proxima, one v five, wants to get something done. Can't get the shot in onto Smurfette. 
There we go. Three kills on the round. We just needed Smurfette to pick up the op again. I don't care what anybody says, Smurfette. There's definitely been told what I was saying about wanting to see some hero plays and Smurfette on the AWP and she certainly did deliver. That was that was insane. I think two of those kills were just straight up through the smoke. It's what you need. Beautiful prediction there. Wow. And now they've so obviously now they get to keep all of their guns so here the difference maker is going to be in terms of ultimates we've got uh hunter's fury available for oxygen which is really good for stopping ingress and really good for stopping uh potential defuses but there's a blade storm available which smurfette can pop in a really dire situation no it doesn't check the corner <gasps> it does get traded out however so we're still on even footing but that's the rays taken out of the equation. Oh, sorry, not rays. I don't know why I said rays. Sage taken out. So no heal available. And the jet's down as well. So Nessa not going to be able to come in and entry. We're going to be relying on Smurfette for Project X to pop off again. I'm really hoping her teammates check the boxes, check the corners. Oh, yes. Nice glance. I love that. There we go. Psycho Alt comes into play, revealing their location, and they know, they know at this point that they're going to try and play for that afterplant potential lineup with the Viper Spit as well, so not being too aggressive and trying to get onto that way too quick, but Smurfette taking a considerable <laughs> amount of damage, gets on that Diffuse, however, will not have enough time to get away from this safely. Ooh. Yeah, no, not gonna be able to defuse, but at least yeah. you'll be able to hold on to the operator. Mm -hmm. Like all the smokes coming out on top of the spike, and all I want to say is, you know, smokes don't neutralize mollies. Yeah, wrong yeah. game, wrong game. <laughs> yeah, wrong game, wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do know that, but it, like every time I see it, it's the first thing I think about for some reason. Project I've always X. said it would be mm -hmm. so interesting to see how much it would change up the dynamic of the game. Because that oh, way yeah. you, have, you would have to make use of your utility so much more carefully, especially considering, you know, not every agent can actually make use of a smoke or buy a molly and things like that. So, who knows, maybe for an April Fool's or something, Riot, if you're listening. <laughs> I've got plenty Honestly, of ideas. It would make an interesting change, but I mean, they've just released an H-shaped map, so you know, I don't think Riot yeah. are low on ideas for, for interesting <laughs> things to add into the game. No, check out Fracture if you haven't done that, folks. Project oh, yes. X now. Sick. Dangerous situation to be in. 11-8. Oh, I don't think that that spotted her. That's hectic. Blinded. Project X need to try to turn this one around. Oxygen have actually been doing very well, but unfortunately, yeah, Ness going down. Ness with the first deaths. This is the second time in a row that she gets first death, and that's never a good sign. It's never a good start to the round. But Oxygen have proven that they don't really need their jet to be alive. They still can clutch out rounds, but they're playing so passively here. Again, it's that fear of like, you know, if we lose this round, our economy is going to be a little bit of a mess. And now we've lost the player. So how do we, how do we approach this? So they found my looks like Spike, here we go. Wall goes up on the B site and they're going to be pushing in here. Know that there are two people available here. Oh, Smurfett shot goes wide. So Rainsor manages to survive. Oh, Roxy, unfortunately, getting taken out just like that. But Cinnamon behind the pillar has the info. There's two on site, manages to pick up two of those kills, and Smurfette coming in clutch. Fantastic Ooh, wow. teamwork from these two girls. That was actually looking very much like a, you know, another oxygen round. It was a good start. Rainsa manages to survive the jet op, and off the back of that, manages to get the opening pick on the B site. But yeah, Project X, those duelists, the, the dynamic duo, just too strong. And it's something that you and I had commented on quite often, how much they swing on one another. As soon as one yeah. person kind of peeks out, you'll have someone swinging with to make sure that either you get the trade or you get the follow-up. And it works perfectly. Now, Ness, not taking any prisoners, pops out. Oh, this is dangerous. She actually gets tagged up. Okay, doesn't get the follow-up damage on, but <laughs> actually manages to take out Cinnamon. I'm not sure how Cinnamon died to that, but thankfully we've got a res available to deal with it. And that's a lot of knives wasted from Ness, but it's okay because the rest of Oxygen, they are there to pick up the slap. There you go, Flash comes in. I'm hoping we see her spray a couple of them down. Maybe only one kill in this case, but Blanc 
It doesn't have the greatest angle to kind of cover the push through, but holds on back and waits for her teammate to join her. One player here behind the wall. I think she would have spotted her. Yep. Angle not quite right to try and spam through the wall. Missing the shots. Smurf felt that's not what you want to happen. Oh, that takes us on to match point now. That was really unfortunate. I am I find myself in a position where I am shocked at the turn <laughs> that this series has taken. I mentioned at the start of the series that Oxygen was a team with a lot to prove. They'd had some decent results very early on in the year. They'd swapped up a few of their players here and there, and they hadn't been able to replicate those same results. So they wanted to really make a statement in this tournament. You know, we're getting to the end of the year now. There aren't going to be a ton more tournaments left, and you want to take every opportunity that you can. And whatever it is, the point they were trying to prove, I feel like they've just about done that. If they can clutch this out, Already, you know, I told you I expected this to be a 2 0 for Project X, so they've already done so much. If they can clutch this out, it would be massive, a huge feather in their caps. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to see how this finals is gonna go. So, before the finals, let's see whether or not they're able to aggress onto this B site. Oh, okay, oh, Kim. no way. to get a kill onto Rainster with that Viper Acid. Rissa trading back. Now Roxy has the info, has pulled it out to her teammates with a Guardian in hand. You mentioned you love the one-tap capability of the Guardian. Let's see whether or not those shots are actually able to connect. Stay down. Never Ooh, Smurfette! Oh, Smurfette with the 3k! Oh, Ness manages to take down Smurfette, but Roxy, there you go. Guardian comes up big. We weren't watching it at the time, but it happened. Uh, glance. <laughs> oh, I think they were just All giving right. her some time to go get the orb. Oh, uh, possibly, yeah. And hand over the old point to Roxy so that they can get that little bit closer to the Resurrect. Because again, we're in perpetual match point. Mm -hmm. There's still potential for that overtime. Purely because it is match point. So if Project X takes us 12 points, well, that's us in overtime. So you may yet have predicted the future again. But Oxygen Esports kind of want to prove you wrong. I think they kind of want to just you know, slap a sticker on this one, clip it and ship it and send it on home. We'll see if they can manage to get that right they do have vipers put available and that hasn't been super effective in this whole series i feel like there's been very few mm. vipers pits that have gotten tons of value uh just in this series in particular so maybe they ben can actually diagram? make something happen maybe venn diagram question mark i'd love to see it happen <laughs> oh they're just kind of elephanting through now not even trying to Take things slow, showing that aggression that we've been asking for all series. Ness taking a little bit of damage here and there, but yeah, we got one of those kills onto Glance. Kim trades that by taking out Ripper. And now Ooh, another. Roxy, Roxy, check the corner! Ah. That's Spain without the S. However, it is still a. Yeah, it's evened out now. It was an advantage for Project X, but Proxima manages to bring the numbers back. Aww. The flash comes out, but Kim is able to win out the duel. Gaia, last person left alive. The counter <gasps> Viper's Pit comes out. Manages to get the kill in onto Smurfette. Oh, this is huge. Taps the spike on a fake. Gaia, does she know where to shoot? Kim is so low HP, but so is oh. Gaia. No, Kim turns her back at the last second. Gaia with the 19 the HP clutch. I can't that, believe they've done it! I'm so impressed! That was huge. From a prediction of it being a 2-0, taking us to third map, such a close series, and honestly, such an imp impressive performance from all of these girls taking part today. I'm, I'm honestly wowed. Yeah, I think that, you know, this is that point to prove that Oxygen kind of had going for them and now they find themselves we're heading on over to the grand final unfortunately that means that we don't get to see the epic remax uh remax rematch between project x and 10 star of course they were the finalists in the the huntress trials last month but that does create an opening for a new team to step into the limelight N new quote unquote i'm looking forward to seeing it actually because I, I haven't seen i think Maybe when 10 Star was still gangsters, they may have played against Oxygen. And I'll double check that before the next series starts. But they haven't played against each other since they were, you know, picked up by 10 Star. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a 
an interesting battle nonetheless because we don't have tons and tons of information on this particular matchup. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a matter of seeing how well we can actually predict the future. But do make sure you guys uh, tune in in a couple of minutes as we get the next lobby set up for our grand finals of Birds of Prey episode two, hosted and ran by none other than The Goose House. If you do want to meet new people, play some games with some fun people, you know, make some new friends, do make sure you type exclamation mark Discord in the chat where you can meet plenty of new folks to run and play some games with. So we'll be right back.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Birds of Prey episode 2, a tournament that has been organised by the Goose House that is exclusive to women and those of marginalised genders. Previously, if you guys were here, you would have seen one heck of a match going on and we finally have our two finalist teams, Ten Star versus Oxygen for our big finals. Obviously, first place uh, gets themselves a very respectable £1,000 on the line and second place with £500. So all to play for here, Nauri. Talk to me. What can we expect to see from these teams? So this is an interesting one. Uh, Ten Star Nova was the kind of favorites throughout the tournament, I felt. Uh, they just come off the back of winning the Huntress Trials, back-to-back -back winners, in fact. Uh, one of the best teams in the region at the moment. And with a couple of teams not participating in this event, I'm talking like uh, Rick's GG and the TGH's own team. Uh, not being able to participate and exit as well. So there were a lot of big contenders. So with that, it just meant that 10 star had a clear favorite. That being said, I really expected project X to be the team in the, the semis or rather in the finals with them. And it's actually oxygen who, surprised i think all of us with a phenomenal performance in the semis going so close against project x but managing to clutch that one out now we've just come off of that series and of course we got to see a little bit of 10 star yesterday and they have some phenomenal players as well i know the one that you've been freaking out the most about is nello because she has the weirdest crosshair ever yeah. and somehow <laughs> makes it work and then you've got lyrilia who plays uh, the smokes and she always does so much for the team there and just I could go through every single player, but we'd be here all day. I could tell you stories about these players, but all that I need to say is that this is actually going to be a very close match because Project X, when they were in the semis in the Huntress Trials, it was a 2-0 to 10 star, but the second map went into overtime. Oxygen has now just beaten Project X. So... I'll be honest, I've been predicting these 2-0 scorelines. This time, I really do think it's going to be a full three-map series. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we even saw some overtimes along the way. You know what I'm like with predicting my overtimes. We didn't see it in the previous series. But who knows, maybe we'll see it in the very first map of our grand finals. Do you want to talk to me a little bit about the uh, you know map, maps, picks, and bands? So 10 star gets to ban first because they're the higher seed and they ban out Ascent, which is definitely a surprise. That's a map that's very, very popular. Teams love playing it because of how straightforward it is, but that's not going to be in the pool. And then Oxygen will go ahead and ban out Bind. So that's not going to be available. Our first map, therefore, is going to be Haven. And this is one of the maps that we saw 10 star playing on yesterday and they did exceptionally well there. Surprise, surprise, for Oxygen's pick, they're taking us to Icebox, which is where they started that reverse sweep against Project X. It was starting to look a little bit dire, but they had a runaway lead in the first half and uh, managed to come out on top. So, you know, it doesn't make me kind of shocked to see that they've picked that for their map. And for our final map of the series, it is not going to be Breeze. It's going to be Split it. instead. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to see all of these maps being played out. Fingers crossed. Maybe we'll go to all three. But should we get into our agent select? What kind of agents do you think we're going to be coming across when we get shot on over to Haven? So I know that Haven has a penchant for raises. Uh, just because of places like Garage, where you can get a lot of value out of the paint shells, and of course the window across from B, well from from B site. Uh, so very likely that we're going to see a little bit of that. Slicey, of course, going to be on the uh, the breach, and we've seen how deadly she can be on that. Oh yes, of course, Claw on Rays. I mean that just goes without saying. Uh, Lyrilia, okay, don't don't tease me, girl. Like. <laughs> I, 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 I really don't know what to expect because I know that she plays the smokes usually, but I feel like she could be a phenomenal sky. Okay, no, it is going to be the Astra. Fair enough, fair play. And Nello on the Cypher. This is the exact composition that we saw from them yesterday. Now, Oxygen, we haven't had a chance to see on Haven. What interests me here is Rainsa again on that Sage. And Sage is an agent that gets almost no playtime on Haven. I haven't seen a Sage on Haven in a long time. Same with, with um, Nino. Like, yes, they do get some playtime, but it's not one of the major agents. And uh, Proxima hovering over that Omen. Again, the stylistic differences, but we have seen how potent the Astras have been. Oh, actually going to lock that one in. 
And it looks like, okay, Guy on the Killjoy. We saw her on that a little bit earlier as well. Some serious power there. Some differences, I think, like they have a very similar setup. You know, there's the Smokers are different. The Sentinels are different. I think obviously the big difference being the Sova versus the Breach. Uh, and I'm curious to see how they leverage that because obviously Oxygen are going to have a little bit more information because of the recon darts and they'll have a little bit more post-plant potential with those shock darts. But we've seen what Slicey can do with the Breach. It is absolutely terrifying when she flashes out and everyone swings on her. Uh, very similar to what we saw in our previous series as well uh, with Glance. There's a similar vibe that happens with Slicey. It works out really well. So that's going to be where the big difference maker is. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned Slicey on the Breach. I cannot wait to see it again. You know what? I feel like I've turned into a little bit of a fangirl of all of these players taking part throughout the tournament. And I'm here for it. I love it. Kiss all the homies. Remember that. That's going to be like, <laughs> that's going to be my new line. And I have you to thank for that. So thank you. <laughs> you are most welcome, I guess. <laughs> this is where all the homies are like, what's wrong with you? What happened? <laughs> Wait, like why why are you now suddenly like this i take no responsibility for this by the way if, if any of your friends suddenly come knocking on my door like what have you done to her i'm like i, I don't know what you're talking about it wasn't me i didn't do nothing <laughs> okay so right. see i like this i like how up close and personal nest is playing oh please be patient oh. if only there was just a little bit of patience there you can see they've already pushed in through garage so you do know that there is one player in towards the window. I'm not entirely sure if KJ knows that there's somebody sat underneath her, but oh, Claw picked up that first kill. Unfortunately, unable to do much else with that, but it does look like A site is wide open for them. And hopefully, yep. you know, we'll see Nello set up a little bit of a tripwire. The flank oh, no, over towards C was really cool, uh, just to try and get that like kind of initial pick off there and make a little bit of noise, create a diversion. But the spike's gone down here, the wall's gone up, and Project X, not Project X, Oxygen? Question mark? That there is a yeah, that that's a mistake on the overlay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, what on earth? Yeah, no, Oxygen needs to find a way onto site here with a player disadvantage. Yeah, with a player disadvantage, sure, but I, I mean, we've seen them pull off some amazing things. So it's three versus four, not the worst situation to be in, as I say that, make that a one versus two. Let's see you go absolutely huge here, Proxima. Unfortunately, unable to do so, but that's our first round on the board. That's a big round for Liralia. Managing to get so many kills on the board there, unfortunately wasn't able to get the ace there. Claw did steal one of those kills, but... A great opening round, and again, it was a case of trying to funnel in through that A connector. I mean, I spoke about it at length yesterday, and it's oh, so yeah. difficult when you don't have an opportunity to kind of split up and create angles for yourselves. But the gun, I mean, the fact that they were just on pistols makes it a little bit harder to split up. Now, again, what interests me, double marshal. You don't see that too often. Maybe one marshal, but two of them on Haven. It's going to shut down two potential sight lines. So, wait, they're both on the same site? Yeah. So I think it's just to make sure in case, you know, one of them does miss their shot, there is the other player there to back them up and trade the kill, hopefully. But, you know, when you have that jet dash in hand, not entirely necessary, but you can see how aggressively um, they've been kind of posted up to try and get that info and be as close to them as possible. Mm -hmm. Exactly like that. Proxima managing to pick up the first kill over there. Now they have the info that Raze was here <laughs> as well. Nice little satchel away. Oh, we saw this angle being played before. I who was it? Oh, Slicey, that was beautiful. You know what? Slicey had decided we fell for this before. It's not going to happen again. Mm -hmm. We saw it happen yesterday. Yep. It was actually in the 10 star game as well where we saw it mm -hmm. happening. Oh, but the angle, there was like a double angle there. So you had two people watching the opposing angles. And even then, 10 star still managed to come out on top. But it's down to a three versus three. Yeah, Claw trying to hold in sewers. Not going to get anything done there. Of course, Oxygen have slightly better guns here. But <gasps> I was about to say, Tenstar have control of the site. But now it's just down to Nello to try to clutch this out. She gets one. Can she get the second? Paranoia comes out. She's in the middle of the reload. No. And unfortunately for her, Proxima comes up massive there. And she's going to be able to get that defuse. And that is huge to have won out that second pistol round. That's going to do some... Some pretty terrible things to 10 stars economy. That's gonna force them back down onto uh, onto pistols. I'm, I believe Tanello 
Uh, it's okay, you'll get them next time. I saw the crosshair and I was like, this is, this is where it's at. <laughs> this is where we see our going clutch. And oxygen could be able to buy up quite nicely here. Four rifles. Hmm. Ness not buying a rifle. Wonder why that could be. Heh 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 heh. Round check four up incoming. <laughs> I'm here for Oh, absolutely. And of course, 10 star just on pistols. Oh. They're going to like full rush through up to sea. Nice little jump peeks there from Proxima to get that information. Oh, they're pulling back. It was a fake. <gasps> Clara, if you get caught out here. Oh, she survives. That's big. Yeah, see, I like this. They haven't rotated way too much. You can see Sofa still sat and posted in towards that A site with... Of course, the support of Sage as well. So they didn't fall for the fake entirely. Uh, B site is pretty open, but that's pretty standard in a situation like this when you have the swarm grenades and the alarm bots to give you that info. They are sat pretty far back on site. I think they're kind of hoping, okay, let's make the sound of footsteps, bait them out a little bit, make them rotate and think Doesn't that work. we're going to commit to A. <laughs> but, you know, big brain plays, honestly. They know this all too well. They're not falling for it. Ness picking up the first kill. She picks up the second kill. Can she make it a third one, Ness? You can do it. Make it four. Go on. Give the people what they want, Ness. Ace incoming, maybe? <laughs> Unlikely. Lurily is on a bit of a flank here again. We've seen how strong her flanks can be. We'll see if she can continue to make that happen. Just try to get some exit frags if possible. I mean, you, you don't want to go out of this round without getting even a single pick. <laughs> it looks like that might be the call of the day. Order up. And that's a slice of uh, humble pie for 10 stars. They've lost another round. Poor Slicey giving you a slice of humble pie. There it is. <laughs> I'm trying to the... come up with as many dad jokes as possible. Yeesh. I see Yeesh. chat has discovered Nello's crosshair. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are they having the similar reaction to me? Nello's crosshair is elite. Yeah, I, I agree. Honestly, I was I was questioning it at first, but you know what? Nello put me in my place and proved to me that it's not all about the crosshair. <laughs> if it works for you, you do you, boo boo. There it is. Oh, that's big. The, the last second smoke there to provide a little bit of cover, but like, ten star don't even swing on that. They just like mm -hmm. leave it open. And again, it's it's just to deny the aggression, which is exactly what it did. It stopped Ness from being able to push all the way in. They would have heard a couple of footsteps there, and they realized, all right, well, we're not going to push that. Instead, now they're fanning out to get information. Spike hasn't actually started making a move just yet. Might be going for that C plant through garage, but nothing committed as of yet. Good use of the satchel to kind of force anybody out hiding around that corner in through towards window. And now they're deciding to, you know, okay, let's pull back. And I like this aggression from Ness and Proxima. They're not being way too greedy about it. Oh, the Ooh. info has been relayed. Ness there to trade it out, but... Oh, <gasps> the dash she, into dropped... The wall. she dropped the gun and then dashed into the wall. So it was just like a mix of all sorts of disaster. Divided. Cosmic Divide coming out. That's an interesting one here from 10 Star. Of course, it's going to lock off Heaven and Hell and a little bit of that ingress onto site. But off Gaia is not even concerned about it. Peeks out. Might not have been the best idea. Get shut down there. Another good round from 10 Star. A very, very slow round. I was a little concerned at just how hesitantly they were approaching these sites. I thought that maybe they would... What what tends to happen so often is you really slow down, uh, your opponent gets an opportunity, they kind of push out a little bit, and then they completely shut you down. But 10 Star managed to kind of get in Oxygen's head, has them second guessing, okay, well, where is it that they're actually going to go? And then a great utilization of the Cosmic Divide as well, just to like shut things down. But as predicted, Ness has that operator in hand. She wasn't able to get it in the last round, unfortunately, but she's got it now. She's taking a very deep angle and she is looking to get some results. I have full faith, but I feel like Lyria is definitely going to play a little bit more passive. Play off the info of her teammates. You can see there she does not want it with, of course, a tripwire set up there. There's no need for her to aggress too much. Safety in numbers. We've said it before. We'll say it again. Swarm Ooh. grenade gets popped. And Cloud decides, you know what? Not today. I do not want to take this fight. Goes back to regain and join the rest of her teammates. Now, two players on site. I'm not too keen of this. Look at... Look at the number of people we have pushing in towards long. Only one player towards short with the sage there. All it really requires is the sage to take that one. No ways. Two huge oh. kills there. 
two very huge kills there. And still managing still to they rinse they through two away. is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Like, yeah. the, for three players to have swung out there and for her to have killed two of them on her own is a huge misplay from 10 Star. And now, okay, Rolling Thunder comes out. That gives a little bit of an opportunity, but it was actually a trade. It's still a two versus two. And Ness is going to pop Blade Storm. She's going to do everything she can to win out this round. And oh my god, Proxima from Heaven actually manages to get a kill slice. He has to clutch this one out. Oh. Misses the paranoia, but gets taken down by the Blade Storm. Storm. This, I feel, was a huge misplay from 10 Star, but huge kudos to Oxygen for taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. See, the issue you have is when you do commit to all of your players pushing up through towards long. I've seen it time and time again. My friends get very frustrated with it when we personally <laughs> don't split apart to push onto a site. All it takes is one player to kind of, you know, have that rifle in hand and spray down your players exactly like we've seen. When you have them split apart, there's definitely a lot more opportunity for you kind of pincer in from all angles and prevent a situation like that from happening. It looked kind of promising once they got the spike down, but unfortunately, you know, these things do happen sometimes. Bit of a force up here once again. Oxygen want to make sure that they can stay in this game, particularly after winning that round. Still have the operator available. Ness still taking an insanely deep angle, but oh, Claw's got like a stinger. Ooh, not the best gun to have. Oh my God, she gets results oh, with it. That's insane! She gets taken so low, but taking down Gaia is massive. That opens up so much, and looks like they're headed for a B-side execute. Now, we know how I feel about this. God, no. You're not going to be a very happy boy, oh. especially when something like that happens. Oh, my goodness. Rinthal went absolutely huge. Now, unfortunately, the ult just didn't even have an opportunity to be fired there. Now, three versus three. Spike in their hands, however. They do have control of oh, no, no, no. Oh, that is not what you want to be happening. So even though they have site control, they're electing to kind of push towards a site. Do they know that Rainter is there? They do now. Slow all coming down to kind of prevent them from pushing onto site. Please watch your back. Oh, that is... <gasps> oh, oh, the collab kill coming through there. Now it's again Slicey versus the world in fact it's it's a repeat of the previous round it's slicey versus proxima and ness but they're both coming in through oh beautiful that was a great play TP. There. <gasps> proxy plays that so perfectly tp's out into the open gives ness an opportunity to swing out and they manage to rinse through slicey no matter how hard she tries there it's always going to be difficult to win that one out yeah, now you can see here, yeah, things not looking too great for her economy-wise, but Ness more than likely gonna drop her a weapon as well. Orb still in the hands of Ness. Looks like we're gonna see her push on out and maybe hold an angle through towards Garage. You know, we've seen uh, Kla pushing that angle multiple times now. Boombot in hand. Now they have the info. Orb is towards Garage. Maybe that provides some more opportunity to push through long being tagged up through those doors over there. Ooh. So much suppressive fire coming through. That's the thing with the Vandal, though. The Tracer rounds kind of gives away your positioning as well. You can kind of follow the bullets back to their source. Phantom doesn't have that problem. So, you know, I'm, I'm Team Phantom. Just thought I'd throw in my two cents on that argument. Now, this is an interesting fight. The two Jets eyeing each other. <clears throat> I mean, they don't know that they're there, but, you know. Oh, no, Slicey. At least flash that out first. Why do you dry peek it? You know Ness has been buying the operator. That's a terrible start to the round here for 10 Star. And immediately they back out, start making their way over towards the A site. Nello has more or less cleared it out, or, or at least told them that it's clear. But oh, is she just on a lurk? Oh no, and Gaia's ready for it. I mean maybe try and make some noise maybe make something happen to kind of bait them out but it doesn't look like the fake is really going to work in a situation like this smoke goes up that was so close i really did think we were going to see another kill through the smoke res goes down with a hunter's fury activated though is this really the greatest idea possible three versus five now with you know less than 10 seconds left on the clock this isn't really doable for them but the worst part is that a has been free for so long and they mm -hmm. decided to go back towards A site or towards C exactly. for some reason. Oh, oh, the split second too late there. And even if they had, I mean, yeah, not, not really much time there to get anything done. So 
They lose one on C long. Nello completely clears A side. She's like, hey guys, there's no one here. There's a party happening. Why don't you come, you know, chill out here with me? The, the water's great. And they're like, now we're going back to C where the, the operator was. And yeah. then by the time they realize that the operator is still there, they're like, oh, we don't have time to go back to A. Guess we'll settle for B and there's not enough time to plant. This is the most confused that I've seen 10 star in a long time. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, I mean, it's a huge credit to Oxygen for pushing them to this point. I am very impressed <gasps> with the improvement that I've been seeing. Oh, what a flick. That was beautiful. Of course, she had the not so great timing on them crossing over into Lung, but I do think she might believe that it was just the one player as you see her falling back and for some bizarre reason pushing towards B, maybe calling it out to her killjoy to maybe rotate swap places. Obviously got that turret for information as well. Looking very, very split apart from one another, but maybe now that the Astra Stars have been activated, you know, smoke's going up. We'll see a little bit quicker of a rotate coming through. There going for the A side execute. Oh Kill lockdown coming in. Beautiful, forcing them off the site as well. Oh, Ness, perfect, perfect, perfect positioning there with an open hand. Obviously, you know they are going to be forced to push off the site. Oh, Ooh. unfortunately, doesn't take the shot on that one. But two players detained. That's that's not looking too bad for them. Oh, Nino's in danger here. Oh. Manages to survive, but there's so many smokes in the way. Trying to fire through the smoke to stop the defuse, and it's just not going to happen. And Claw actually comes up so huge there. Three kills, but it just wasn't in time to stop the defuse from going through. Oh, that's heartbreaking. And even at the end of it, Proxima is the one that gets the final kill. So even if there had been enough time, still wouldn't have actually been able to win the round. And now mm -hmm. a much, much needed timeout from 10 Star. They are looking ragged. You know, we typically speaking, we've seen 10 Star have quite a lot of composure when it comes to, you know, playing in these tournaments, playing in these games, as we saw yesterday, but it feels like they're a little bit over, all over the place right now, you know? I feel like maybe communication might not be all there. I feel like they, there's a definite sense of panic as such, you know, because we saw it previously in the previous round where they kind of ended up running out of time, you know, Nello had the site clear. Yes, nobody was really communicating, it seemed like, at least to me. And I'm hoping this time gives them exactly that opportunity to kind of have a formulated plan put together and kind of run with it. Well, a plan is definitely something that's needed right now because they've looked very disjointed. Um, haven't really had that same synergy and cohesion that we've become so accustomed to from this team. Mm -hmm. They do have two ultimates available, which can do some serious damage. Rolling Thunder to help push defenders off of sight, or possibly that Cosmic Divide. We saw them win out a great round with that, but having been forced back down onto a half buy, it's unlikely we actually see those ultimates come out. On the other hand, there's some big ults here from Oxygen as well. Bladestorm at the... Oh my god, this aggression immediately gets punished, but like, you take that trade. Oh my word, that was kind of all over the place. Oxygen had their number, they knew exactly what was going to happen. And you know what? No remorse. I love it. Just got rinsed through. It was just a blender. And <laughs> it ran into the sight lines and, and that was that. I don't have Oxygen too much more to say about that. <laughs> yeah, Oxygen pretty much. <laughs> Uh, they, okay, so Slicey has the ult to work with here as well. You got literally out with the wall as well, and Kla with that um, really, really useful raise ult too. So, hoping they're actually going to be able to open up a lot of space on the map. We would love to see a C push coming into play here. However, I do think all that gunfire may actually bait them out a little bit. And make them think they're going to be trying to go in for a C push. You can see four of those players being committed towards C site. I would love to see a rotation coming in now. Yeah, if there was ever a time for it, now would be it. Although the C site is pretty covered with both the operator and a ton of Killjoy utility. The A site might just be a better option. It's less heavily covered. But this time around, Nello hasn't gone on a flanking mission to like make sure that the site's clear. And instead, it looks like they're going for a potential B hit. 
Now they are going to need to cover these angles, cover the connectors to make sure that they can actually get in onto the site. Claw. Ooh, that flash comes in so clutch. Manages to get the first kill there. Another flash is going to come through. They don't manage to get a kill off of it, but they are going to be moving into this connector area. Unfortunately, Ritha is going to be the one to win out that duel. Traded back, it's back down to the three versus three. Spike hasn't been planted yet, and Tenstar in a very rough situation. Oh my god, that's the third time! <gasps> Slicey just keeps getting shut down by that op. Orp is incredibly dangerous, especially when in the hands of someone like Ness. No spike to kind of make a plant work either. Takes us to 8-2 now. Man oh man, not a single ult was made use of that either. <sighs> this is looking rough. This is um, a diet. This was 10 stars map pick. This is their playground. This is where they do exceptionally well on. And for the first time, we're seeing them really, really struggle. This is, yeah, really surprising. Back down. I mean, they haven't been forced onto a full save. They've got a couple of SMGs here. But again, I mean, they didn't even get to use their ults in the previous round because it was over so quickly. So there's no way they use their ultimates here. Oh, Nello, a bit of a flank. Here's some footsteps. Might be a chance to actually... Nope, she pulls back. Mm. No, but I think if she waits, she might just hear them jump through window. Ooh. There we go. She has the infos. At least two of them pushing three towards long fires. The shot. No, there's the second one, but unfortunately the third one manages to take her out. Now, literally, she has the info. That's an okay trade, though, especially considering that it's an eco round. Oh my god, okay, Aww. Cosmic Divide comes out. Claw throws in the showstopper, doesn't manage to get the value. Now we even see the Rolling Thunder coming out. <gasps> they invest so much, Nino actually swings out and capitalizes on it, but Slicey unfortunately goes down. Two versus two, Spike is ticking away. Is there even going to be time to defuse? This is actually a thrifty-ish round win for 10 Star. Thrifty adjacent. Yeah, not bad. Nino gets taken out by Spike as well. It's unfortunate. I I always get scared when I see it's kind of approaching like the eight three mark. I'm like, please, please no, please no. But you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to jinx anything. But I think you know how we said this might go <laughs> all three maps. You know that thing called Caster's Curse that we talk mm. about. Hmm. Yes. Well, to be fair, next map is Icebox. So, oh, shoot, but that's Oxygen's map pick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this could be very, very dangerous. Hunter's Fury comes out immediately to clear, down, clear out any aggression into mid. Gonna stop 10 Star from pushing in. Now, hearing this gunfire suddenly reminds me that I haven't seen an Odin on Haven in the longest time. <laughs> I kind of miss it. Those, those were the good old days. As much as I hate the Odin, you know. It's just the disrespect of using an Honestly. Odin. <laughs> oh. And again, we, we've got this like super slow approach here. Tenstar just trying to figure out. Oh man, just run straight into that crosshair. Okay, hey. Ritha decides, you know what? I've had enough, enough's enough. I'm gonna pull out two cheeky kills here. Now Nello. Bit of patience, a little bit of composure could have gone such a long way. They all had their backs turned to her. This is the third B um B execute that I have seen go horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this again. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't. Oh. Just pretend there's C site and A site. That's it. This is a two-site map with a really big midsection. Like, yeah, exactly. trying to execute on B most of the time fails horrifically. We've gone into the half at a 9-3, but now 10-star have a chance to turn it around. It's not the greatest scoreline to try and, you know, claw back from. If they can win the pistols, then they're off to a really good start. So I suppose we kind of have to wait for that to see how the tone gets set for this map. They've mm -hmm. shut down double doors. They don't want to allow... Okay. They're actually just going to break the wall. That's a choice. 
So see, now they have the info that there is in fact more than one person there. Maybe deciding to fall back a little bit and force the rotation. I'd love to see them try and fake and make their way towards A site potentially, but yeah, doing good work here. I love this crossfire setup. I just love it. <laughs> I think they made a step. Yep. They will have definitely heard that one. There we go. Gravitational oh. wall comes in. Oh man, didn't even <laughs> need it. Look at that. They swing out at the exact same time and both of them managed to win out those duels. Spike, however, is on the other side of the map. Is she going to oh check this word. angle? <gasps> oh, right click. Oh. Rain supreme. Proxima, last person left alive here. Is going to get the spike plant, so that's at least a couple extra credits in their pocket at the end of the round, but I think this is just clean up. Yeah. Solid round there from 10 star. It's yeah. interesting how Oxygen had decided to split up so heavily in this very first pistol round. We, we've spoken about it a few times over the last couple of days, but like when you have that gun disadvantage, you want to be kind of moving together. So for them mm -hmm. to have split up that much and then get caught out, it just kind of played into 10 Star's hands. Yeah. Ooh, Spectres all round. I'd love to see it. <laughs> oh, I just want to see everybody butt heads, right? Everybody just charge in through... Please, whatever you do, just don't charge in through CT, because that's a disaster waiting <laughs> to happen, that funneling through. Now, what's interesting is that this is obviously a force-up from Oxygen. They've lost the first pistol round, and this, of course, can go horribly wrong if you lose this round. If mm -hmm. 10 Star wins this round, they're in good standing. But if Oxygen lose here, then they're back down onto a pistol round. That being said, they're not going to allow it to be a lost round. Spike is already going down. And like you said, that funnel very likely to be happening here. Literally are trying desperately to destroy this wall. Taking that back. Taking that back. Covering oh, it. Picking up her stars again. A little bit of a cool down there. But she's hoping to plant some of that utility on the site so that they can push through. One in heaven. So they've got a little bit of a cross to work with. But it's not great. Yeah, I'd love to see a star go down. Maybe gravity well to pull someone in in that hidden little cubby. There we go. You see it come through. Now they get taken out and they just not quick enough to kind of swing on each other's contact, I think. Valiant attempt there literally actually manages to get two kills at the at the end there. And this was a very powerful round for Oxygen. It really was like a, a proper power move, right? They force up and they actually win the round. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Gaia's gonna be... Okay, she died in the previous round, so she's actually buying up to a rifle. Both of them, maybe? Uh, Rains Oh, no, okay, okay. Playing okay. plain with your feels, playing. <laughs> Giving that hero rifle over just to have a little bit of that extra firepower. Meanwhile, 10 star back down onto pistols. Oh, that is such a good start to the round. Holy cow, how do you do that? That is not what you want to be happening. I think Ness has heard the footsteps and knows that there is someone sat behind the door. Oh, definitely heard the sound that there is two players sat towards Garage. Relaying the info. Healing. Getting a heal up and rightly so. Please stay away from that B site. Don't even consider it. <laughs> there we go. The pushing coming in through Garage. Oh, now please, please Proxima, keep an eye on the flank. Gotta have flank watch going. Cause uh yeah, that's that's a pre oh my goodness, no, but look. Oh I was waiting for that. She doesn't check the angle and oh my goodness, they turn around for backup and Ness is just waiting. They just walk straight into her crosshair. Spike being planted now on the A site. Let's see what Nello can do here. Cheeky little one tap. Picks up the Spectre in hand as well, managing to shoot out that wall, draw attention to herself. But now they have the info that all, both of the players are sat towards CT and we don't want to see that funneling out. Not again. I'm wondering if we see the shot start maybe picking up a kill. Not uh, if it's over this damage like that. She like backed up into it. Oh my goodness, they don't check that angle. There's always someone in Cubby. They probably yeah. thought that because they used the aftershock, there wouldn't be someone there. And there just was. Mm-hmm. You hate to see it. I'm devastated. I mean, as 
amazing as it is to see Oxygen doing so well, this is like a completely different 10 star to what we saw yesterday. They're floundering. They just have no idea how to deal with Oxygen. And Oxygen, just keep the pressure up at all times. Yes, they're still on a, like a really weird buy, and they're still winning rounds. Mm -hmm. It's crazy what they're managing to pull through. We mentioned having seen Oxygen playing quite passively and quite a little bit scared in the previous maps that we saw today, but this is a whole new Oxygen that we're kind of seeing in this map here. And you know what the most surprising and worrying thing is? This was actually 10 stars pick as well. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of leads me to believe, you know what, Icebox might be a little bit of a stomp. Icebox potentially going to be quite messy. Oh, teleport up onto the box. I don't think this is a B execute. I think this, oh my God, it's actually a B execute. Oh, okay. My word. They've put up a lot of smokes and stuff though. And they have actually fanned out to try and take control of A connector, but B connector has been left more or less unchecked. And you know, we'll get the kill through from B connector. Oh, oh there we go. Even in A, Nello is popping off. See, even when you're on like a winning tear, the B site hit will completely end your streak. And oh, it has yeah. nothing to do with the fact that Oxygen had worse guns and everything to do with the fact that it was B. Yes. Yeah. It's my story mm -hmm. and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Exactly. I'm wondering how long it's going to be before we see people just stop going to B. Never. It's just never going to happen. There are times when it does work out, particularly if you're able to use some of that utility. For example, if you run in, and I say run in, if you're able to like, we've seen it done where they wall off like B connector, for example, get one behind B site and you have two out pushing out way. through the A connector, then you can cover most of your angles yeah. and it can work. Does it always work? No, but you have a better chance of actually making it work in that instance. But most of the time teams will try to make the B hit and they won't cover those angles. And then it's just way too easy for the defending team to take to retake control of the site. Now in this round, Oxygen, they've popped the Blade Storm, waiting for the right moment to use it. But aside from that, there aren't any super impactful ultimates. There's a res available for Oxygen, so that's pretty big. It can bring someone back in if they're in a resable spot. But 10 only really have Neural Theft, which might help them out kind of in the late game. If they can find a body, we might get the, the eat spam coming through. Oh, Slicey. Ooh. It just looked like Slicey's attention was elsewhere. The crosshair was there, but the clicks just did not follow. Now they have the info. There is one player from Oxygen on site. Wall goes up onto one side, but literally, yeah, let's see what you can do here. Unable to connect those shots. Now, three versus five. Satchel comes into play. And I like this. I like how patient they're playing. They're, make, they're waiting until they waste all of their utility, you know, making use of their smokes, their swarm grenades, and all that good stuff before deciding, okay, you know what, we can actually push in and maybe contest this. They're covering all of their angles here as well, making sure that, or trying their best to make sure that the retake can't happen, but Claw gets the kill through the paranoia, predicts that site. Neural Theft comes through, gives the information of where they are, but unfortunately, Nino doesn't have the wall available. The trade comes oh. through, it's down to, <gasps> manages to get Proxima. Is she oh. baiting with the res? Possibly Ness is back. The knives miss, she just has the classic, gets the kill, and it's all down to Nello. Time is ticking down, and... Oh, Oxygen play that so beautifully. Oh I my goodness. I literally just started clapping my hands and I was like, wait a second, <laughs> I can't do I can't do that. Um wow, that was actually really impressive um map awareness and placement of Ness, obviously with the blade storm in hand. Kind of circling around. They didn't expect it at all. Really unfortunate it that it didn't work out for Oxygen, but it didn't work out for Ten Star, sorry, but map point honestly now. yeah i mean oxygen played that superbly like mm -hmm. the most one of the most perfect playing for time that i've seen even with the res coming wow, through it just wasn't dope. enough and like you said match point here for oxygen 10 star have just not been able to get themselves back into this game they're not even at the halfway line yet they haven't made it to, the, to six points run. even Yes, Nello. Yes, predicted. But unfortunately, the shots are not connecting. 
finally takes down the ultimate there. So that's going to be no lockdown available for you. They're still, however, going to be going for this A site hit. But look at this flank coming all the way around the attacking spawn. There we go. Sage wall goes up. Everybody's setting up their post plant positioning. Please do not funnel through that, whatever you do. You have two players on the flank as well. Nino managing to pick up one of those kills. Both players pushing through long. Info has been there really like Nello. Oh my word. Oh, not able to make use of that all over there. Proxima TP in it away. Oh, one versus <gasps> one now. Play time, please. Oh. <sighs> the Ferrari swing there from Lyria. Yeah. yeah. That could have honestly gone either way. That TP from Proxima into Sewers to give herself sightline onto the spike so that she would be able to actually play around the cover that Sewers gives. And then she mm -hmm. manages to get that second last kill of the round there. And it's just down to her versus Lirelia, Omen versus Astra. And I think that we've just proven that Astra is better. <laughs> Astra just built different. <laughs> Honestly, Astra diff. We still have match point though. Like the tension oh, has not that. alleviated Take even down. one iota for Tain Star because now look at this janky buy. They're mm -hmm. better off than oxygen, sure, but like not by much. Yeah, not Ooh. by much. Oh, Guillaume oh, no. connect that shot over there with the marshal in hand. There is one player sat up close and personal, it's, which is. Well, I don't think she has any idea about that there. Oh, oh no, okay. Goodness. Judge power coming in clutch. Slicey just dies to another operator and it breaks my heart. Oh no, clock. <gasps> it misses. Oh, that's huge. I actually thought that might hit, but it didn't. It's still like completely even, uh, even Stevens here. But with three ultimates still online here for oxygen, they definitely are favored. Although to be fair, that was true in the previous round as well. And off the back of those first two kills coming through, they've been forced down into a far more kind of passive approach. Still haven't even quite decided where they want to go. They knew that, the, well, they know that there was a judge in Double Doors. So like, what's the new plan? Oh, oh. the peak. Lirilia with the hero rifle. Oh, Guardian coming up big. <laughs> I, but th here's the thing, right? They had the recon available to them to get that info, to scout out and at least gain the information of, okay, do we actually want to commit to this B site? All it would have taken is one save a recon and that definitely would have revealed the two players that were sat on site. But instead, no, you set, full send it, guns blazing through the smoke when you've not actually made use of the crucial util that you could have. But, you know, the, things are looking still pretty okay for them. They've got, a, obviously, a, quite a big lead in that sense but full buy oh Oof. full buy for oxygen 10 star kind of quote unquote bonusing it's not ideal they can't buy up to anything bigger so they're forced to kind of work with what they have available yes they've made, put up some numbers with the guardians but oh it's not wife. the best situation to be in some of that cypher utility is being taken down as well so Eyes getting, you know, eyes wide shut. Oh, the big fake Come coming into out. play here. Making as much noise as Keep possible, taking. throwing those omen smokes down to try and bait them out and make them think that you're all making your way towards a site. But 10 star, they're no stranger to these <gasps> fake plays. They know. Oh, TP into spawn. And literally, oh. gets caught out by it. Tenstar seem to have found some ground here. Ooh, Proxima! Oh. No ways! That TP into spawn comes up so huge. Manages to take down Lirilia and oh. both players who come looking for her, but is not going to be able to win it out against Nino. However, it does get traded out. Now it's just Claw versus Ness. The two duelists, the firepower of these two ladies is unmatched. But who's going to come out on top? And it is oh. Oxygen! Oh! Winning without even a spike plant, it just came down to that 1v1, a beautiful final shot there from Ness will secure the first map victory for Oxygen. Honestly, I am incredibly surprised considering, you know, this was 10 stars map pick, 
going over into Icebox next. I, I, I'm not entirely sure what to expect from that, but honestly, really good performance from all of the girls, particularly Ness, you know, kind of popping off a little bit with that Marshall in hand too throughout the games. Mm -hmm. Any players that stood out to you in particular throughout this match? Oof, tough to say. Honestly, I think that they all just performed exceptionally well. It was mm -hmm. one of those matches where everyone did their best to play their part. Mm -hmm. And it came down to that like team effort. And Oxygen were just, they were just better. You know, they were just what it is in their shot. Yeah, sometimes yeah. sometimes it, it'd be like that sometimes. Quick five minute break and then you can regain and go again. But speaking of a quick break, we're going to throw to one right now. But we will be back very, very shortly to continue our grand final so don't go anywhere go grab a drink grab some food and we will be back very shortly
Hello everybody and welcome back to Birds of Prey episode 2, a tournament organised that is exclusive to women and people of marginalised genders. We're over in the grand finals now where we're going to see 10 Star versus Oxygen. We saw a wonderful first map and now we're going to head on over to Icebox which is Oxygen's pick. Now Ray, yeah. talk to me, how do you think this one's going to go? It's interesting because the first map was obviously 10 stars pick. It's one of their better maps. We, we've seen them do some exceptional stuff over the last few months, but yeah, they just weren't able to clutch that one out. 13-7 final score in favor of Oxygen. Now we're moving over to uh, Icebox and we saw Oxygen play Icebox against Project X and it was a little bit one-sided. I'll be perfectly honest. And I'm not too sure how I feel about you know, 10 star coming into this map. They were looking pretty shaky on the previous one. And I'm I'm kind of hoping that they can bring it back, but I got to be honest, I, I, Turkish supremacy at this point. <laughs> we're seeing a, like a little bit of an identical lineup once again, with the exception of the Reyna for the Killjoy this time. How do you think this is going to work out in maybe 10 star or Oxygen's favor? Well, again, so these are those two compositions that are like the two most picked compositions on Icebox. And it's mm -hmm. it all comes down to a stylistic difference. You pick the Killjoy because you're expecting to be a little bit more anchored. Uh, you want to have a slightly better flank watch and you've got a little bit more of that post plant utility. On the other hand, you pick the second duelist. You want to be like super explosive, getting in the enemy team's face, having that extra raw firepower and obviously the extra flash as well. Uh, and the Empress being a very powerful ultimate on its own for potential late game snowball effect. They match up fairly evenly just in terms of like the composition itself. So it mm -hmm. really does just come down to how well these two teams play those two compositions. And for the moment, 10 star pretty well spread out across the map not you know focusing oh. too heavily oh what a beautiful poison cloud there it actually protects claw yeah that was wonderful because the timing of that being popped as well definitely worked in her favor hugely they're doing a pretty good job of holding them off the site right now as well not able to get a spike plant just yet but shots being fired left right and center ripper going huge nesta to back her up and Slicey firing some shots. Let's see if she can make this work in a one versus three now. Slicey was on that breach in the previous map, but of course she does flex to the jet when necessary. Unfortunately, here yeah, Oxygen post plant positions just way too strong. That Sage Wall was up for so long. Yes, they did manage to break one of the panels, but it wasn't enough to really give them a, a good sight into the spike and where the rest of the Oxygen players were kind of holed up. Mm -hmm. That's the first round in favor of Oxygen. I know we're just on round one, but it's a, it's a bit of a rough omen for 10 Star. We're not seeing them force up, which is what Oxygen do if they lose the first pistol and they force up in the second round. 10 Star going for a slightly more standard approach except that of course slicey going to be picking up that marshal this time around we might just see that round three operator maybe round four depending on how these next two rounds go yeah we saw a cheeky little lineup coming in from the viper there as well blocking the vision of the sova drone edging closer through mid to get that info and spike being planted now we mentioned this before safety and none it's a always you know it's pretty much your best bet especially when you're all on pistols in this case recon dart still available as well to try and reveal their location and give you that info too i'm not too sure if i'm a big fan of having them all pushing from the same angle though in a situation like this but i guess we'll find out whether or not it works out for them shock dart going in inflicting that initial damage counter wall goes up providing that safe cover for a diffuse see Relying on those lineups to try and ninja. Yeah, it was it was looking promising. It really was. There was a definite possibility to make that one work, but unfortunately, those viper lineups are so yeah. strong. Getting those mollies landed on top of the spike, it, it was actually so close. If it wasn't for the fact that the molly was there, it 100% would have been a defuse. But oxygen, it's another round that they just play absolutely perfectly. I'm yeah, see, that's, see. Oh, that's exactly why I'm not, I wasn't really a big a fan of them, you know, all of them kind of pushing in from that one direction, because you know immediately as soon as you're playing against the Viper, they will be relying on those lineups. 
Had they mm -hmm. kind of split apart and some of them gone to take out that Viper, it definitely would have been winnable for them. But we move on to the next round nonetheless. Full by all around the board. This is a, a bit of a bonus round. Oh my god, Nino! Beautiful stuff there. A two for one trade and you absolutely take those. But Oxygen have managed to take really good control of mid here. Ten star trying to hold control of kitchen, but Ness knows that there's someone up there. They're winning out the duels though. Oxygen uh, not able to respond to this. Wow. Ten star only losing one player. Now, of course, they did have the slightly better buy. Unfortunately, Oxygen, uh, they I say unfortunately, they were on the bonus because they had won the previous two rounds. So mm -hmm. they did buy up to like one rifle just for that extra little bit of firepower. But once that was off the board, Ten star huge advantage. And now on top of that, they've also got a blade storm, and Oxygen haven't actually managed to put up any of their ults yet, despite winning two rounds. Yeah, I see also having the blade storm to work with. Not gonna need to pop that one in this case, I don't think, because you know, going up against pistols, I'd quite like to I'd quite like to see them push in as a unit. We saw it before, whenever they are on an eco, that's where we see plenty, plenty of aggression coming through. We've spoken about it previously, but mm, Ooh, that's really what a unfortunate. Shot. Beautiful stuff there. The wall actually comes up, but doesn't really help too much. And Slicey again coming up so big. Two players left alive here for Oxygen. A nice little backstab kill there, but is it going to be enough to turn the round around? Oh, I did it again. Around, around. <laughs> you spin my head right around. <laughs> sure. <gasps> oh, Crossfire is just so strong there. Pretty decent for an eco round. I mean, 10 star only have two players left alive. Yeah, that's definitely gonna hurt their economy a little bit, but they win the uh, round and that's the important part. They've managed to even out the score line. Nello with the... See, I told you, I told you, okay. She's doing it because she knows I'm gonna comment on the crosshair. And you know what, Nello, I'm gonna feed into it. I'm gonna do it 100%. Yesterday I pointed out that, you know, there is a smiley face crosshair. I have no idea how on earth people can actually aim with that and get a kill with it, but you know what, Nello? The queen of crosshairs, you do you, boo boo. If it works, then please teach me. I need your settings, your res, your sense, everything. And it really does work. What also works is Slicey, who now has an operator in her hands. But Oxygen have three ultimates on the board, and two of them are massive. Hunter's Fury and Lockdown. Perfect for getting it onto site, and that's going to be the first one coming down. Ten Star have nothing to answer that with. Is, Ni is Nino just gonna like chill here? Are they all just gonna? Did they oh, destroy they the lo they destroyed out. the they lockdown? Out. That's huge. Oh, now the Hunter's Fury comes in to try and do that damage. Nino looking dire on, on terms of uh, health. There, but... Oh, that was huge from Nino. Oh. Oh, come on, Nino. You... That was a huge two kills for her. Kla unable to follow up with that, but two versus two now. Slicey with an op in hand. They do hear the spike being planted. And Viper ult as well. This is going to be a tough one to turn around. I see Slicey drop the operator for a rifle. It's definitely the favored gun in this sort of a situation, but unfortunately didn't expect Gia to be just around the corner there. It's down to Nello to try to make something happen. They would have heard her drop down. Very low oh. HP. Oh, pushes through the smoke, but unfortunately Proxima had her number. Three to two scoreline. Fairly expensive round for Oxygen though. They did burn three ultimates in that round. And in the time that that happened, Ten Star have managed to build up an extra two ultimates of their own. However, they're not going to be able to use them in... The well, they are able to use them in this round, but I would advise against it because they... I mean, look at that buy. Mm -hmm. They've got a bulldog and two rifles. It's definitely not ideal. If they can get one or two picks and turn it around in their favor, yeah, absolutely drop one of those ults just to secure the round. But otherwise, maybe just hold on to them. And you say that. Oh, those yep. go down. Looks like they've decided otherwise, but would love to see some Viper Spit go down as well to kind of delay the push on through. Sofa drone going in as well to gather as much intel as possible. Has been tagged up, so they are aware of where she is. <laughs> Claw getting value with the bulldog. Sure, why not? 
And yep, there you go. There's a snake bite coming out, but not really going to do much because Oxygen have realized, well, A might not be the best idea. So now they're actually going to be pushing through mid, up through kitchen. And Tenstar are just not covering this. Ness is, of course, on a little bit of a flanking mission to make sure that they have some extra angles covered. But, like... Okay, finally it gets clocked. Okay, they're not here on the A side. <gasps> Ness! 500 IQ. Oh, I personally probably would have been like, okay, very take, but that's huge. Nino stuck in the plant just like that. Of course, the decay coming into play as well. Ness with only 4 HP, I think that was. Yeah, that was absolutely huge. Spike gets planted. 2 versus 5. You will not kill my Rhino comes uses in as the well. smoke orb against them, actually. Knows that it's going to, like, cover her as well, so she can deny the plant. But unfortunately, it's just not enough to maintain. They do res, though, that makes this winnable. Mm -hmm. Big shot dart as well. There we go. Sticking the defuse as well. Getting that huge in itself is absolutely huge. We spoke about this before. Those lineups are absolutely crucial for you to... Wipe off the side of it with no more spit to kind of work with. One versus one now. Can she get the defuse 27 HP to work with? Oh, she just does not have the time to make this happen. Viper utility. Just, you do not play Icebox without a Viper. And again, that's another round where Proxima uses that utility to just completely deny a defuse entirely. Whether it was the poison orb or the snake bite, there was always something on top of the spike, slowly ticking away the HP, making it impossible to get the full defuse. And then, of course, when it comes down to the one versus one, sure, you can try and stick it, but then Proxima is just going to swing on you. So yeah. you have to, like, make a really tough decision. And unfortunately, at the end of it, it just came down get to Penstar loses that round. Now we have dueling blade storms out and about for both of these two teams, as there is a two-point deficit here. Tenstar need to find a way back into this game. I think they've got the info. They are flanking up behind them now. Should have been relayed by now. Good placement of the smoke as well. Looks like Slicey takes the lead over Ness with the blade storm in hand. Nino now has the info. That there is one up above her. Post that kill out Ooh. as well. Slicey. <gasps> Sova on Sova violence. Lyrilia now left oh. alone. Oh, imposter <laughs> down. Lyrilia wins out the 1v1 and she will get that defuse. Beautifully played here. And another thrifty round for 10 star. And it's always wild to me when teams win on eco rounds because, like, realistically, that shouldn't happen. They did burn a little bit in that round and the previous round as well. So they don't have a heck of a lot to play with in the next one. But Overall, a damn good round for 10 star. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the Guardian's back. Your trusty Guardian in the hands of hey. Ness. Did look like they be. were contemplating with Gia having a Marshall in hand as well, but they decided otherwise, decided against that. Oh, the slow peaks are going to come into play, and this is not what you want. You just don't want to feed them kills, oh, and the drone wasn't perfect. low enough to get the info. And the drone gets oh. killed on the other side. <gasps> but they expected it! So I see doesn't manage to get the shot because Brainza doesn't swing out far enough. They expected the operator to be there. And now that they know that the op is there, they're completely swinging in the opposite direction. Well, maybe not completely. All right, cool. They just toyed with the idea for a second. Oh, my word. It looks like they're going to start making their way towards A. They do have the info. There was one on top of Jenny. Drone going in for that crucial info that we keep going on and on about. Got a little recon to trader on back. Location has been revealed as well. They still above. have very good control of the map though. There it is. Spikes down. Lyrilia in control of the site once again. The Sova coming up so huge. It's always fun to see her on the Sova, because I'm so used to her on Smokes. But she's doing so well here. Oh, Guardian comes up big, but not big enough. Lyrilia with the final kill of the round, evens out the scoreline. This is a very scrappy map. I feel like we're going to see 
one round here, one round there. You know, as of so far, it's been two for two every single time. But who knows? Maybe <laughs> that timeout is going to be the difference maker here as we see a timeout come in on behalf of Oxygen. I think let's uh, let's get the economy, the scoreboard up, if we can, just so that I can take a look at what their numbers look like. So Slicey, of course, going to be chilling with the operator still. This puts Nino and Claw in a difficult situation. They can be bought for, though. So there will be full rifles across the board for 10-star, well, for both teams. But unfortunately, Rainser isn't able to buy up full armor. It's a very slight issue, quote-unquote. It's not the end of the world. They should still all have full abilities as well. So not a massive detriment. But it can make a little bit of a difference, especially because 10 Star has the Hunter's Fury and the Empress available. And I kind of spoke about how one of the differences between the Reyna and the Killjoy is that you have that Empress available. For late round Snowball, it can be incredibly potent and really, really useful for kind of cracking open, uh, you know, a, a hole in the, in the offense. So we might see that come into play here. Or just the Hunter's Fury to deny a plant. We haven't actually seen that today. Which surprises me quite a bit, but yeah. you know, it's 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 a potential thing that can happen sometimes. Sometimes. Oh <laughs> snap. <laughs> Alright, all trying to cover towards underneath the tube. Maybe not the greatest idea since they are all pushing through towards long. That's smoke denying just a little bit of visibility as well. Wall going down. Slicey, I feel like can most definitely have this. And that that uh, container, of course, is wall bangable. So even if they do manage to make it onto site and get a plant down, see, especially when it is shot out like Ooh. that, slicey, too fast for them. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I just got debated. I just got debated. <laughs> Holding that incredibly tight angle between the the slats and the wall there to try and make sure that a plant can't go through, but. There's two players from different elevations holding on Slicey to try and deny her the opportunity to actually get a kill there. And with the Viper walls going up on both sides, that denies a ton of field division for Slicey, but that's okay because the rest of her team are there to get another kill. Four versus three here. Ten star in the driving seat for the moment. Let's see if they can hold on to that. Definitely not what you want to be happening. Here, but you can see Slicey slowly pushing on up with Nino by her side. Unfortunately, gets taken out, and it's all up to you now. Slicey not able to pick up a kill there. It was, it was looking really promising as soon as they got that first kill, but I think as soon as that wall went down, they kind of just seemed a little bit over the place. And then, of course, the Viper wall goes up, so your line of sight is completely compromised. Tainstar was in the driving seat, but given where the spike had been planted and so much utility had already been burned early on in the round. So you get to that point and super unfortunate because like Empress was committed into that as well. So now they're not going to have that available. All they have now is that Hunter's Fury. And while that can do so much, Oxygen have four ultimates available and they're four really big ones. They can also just use the lockdown push 10 star off of site and there's no way to counter it oh i was about to say the hunter's fury maybe would come into play but never mind that was a little bit trigger happy very, very early, early hunter's early fury on. yeah yeah <laughs> and now they know it should we pop our kill show they don't really have anything to kind of contest it with so wouldn't be surprised if i see that coming into play right now well i mean that was oxygen's hunter's fury so yeah, and 10 stars still have their Hunter's Fury. But it's an A hit with the Viper's Pit coming down. This would be the perfect time to pop that Hunter's Fury. Guess not. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the case of maybe I'll need it later on in the game. But then you, you're faced with the situation of, you know, what if later on never comes? Mm, exactly. Like, there's a fine line, a fine balance between using ultimates and saving them for a more important round. But a 5v5 retake is the position we find ourselves in. Brought down to a 4v4. Nice little trade out there. Trying to find Proxima to get rid of this Viper's Pit, but she is denying them entryway at every single turn. Only two players make that one player left alive. Slicey heading for the hills here, trying to hold on to this rifle. Proxima trying to chase her no. down. 
Oh, oopsie. Proxima actually dies to the spike in her bloodthirst to try and take out Slicey. But at least Slicey holds on to the rifle. That being, I mean, we, we've done like two, 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 two. So is this where Ten Star win the next two rounds? Question mark. Maybe. I think it's maybe. definitely a possibility. Maybe. <laughs> definitely a possibility. I wonder if we could have that happen all the way throughout the entire game. Please no. That that it would be satisfying and it would be one hell of a match. Please no. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, like, no, damn it, I, you jinxed it. Yeah, no, I mean, that would just be very, a little bit too intense, I think. And I look at this incredibly aggressive push straight in onto the A site. Oxygen know that they have a massive gun advantage here, and they're going to take full advantage of it. Oh, claw, the cheeky one tap. Okay, I see you. Flash available to her as well. She wants to flash onto the other side while her teammate peeks off her flash, but this looks like she's gonna try and do as much damage as possible. Rains are trying to watch the flank. Slicey picks up that kill. And now Club with that flash, unfortunately unable to connect. Is Tenstar really about to win another thrifty round? Is, is that really what you... Okay. <laughs> oh, they had right one hero then. rifle and the rest was just pistols. And there you go, that's another thrifty round in the bag for Tenstar. How I feel like it's when Oxygen are getting really, really aggressive because they know that they have the gun advantage and they kind of misstep a little bit and Tenstar just take advantage of that. And I mean, it's, it's working, so, you know, that's fantastic. And now Ness has picked up an operator. Slicey doesn't have one, unfortunately. The last couple of rounds have been pretty expensive for Tenstar. And they're gonna have to deal with Ness. And we've seen how potent she can be with this operator. She's absolutely terrifying. On top of that, she's got Bladestorm as well, if necessary. Tenstar's still holding on to that Hunter's Fury, possibly waiting for that lockdown, but we know that they can deal with the lockdown even without a Hunter's Fury. They've done it before, so... Mm -hmm. Just curious as to why they've been holding on to it. There you go, see? Shocked off. Yeah, ah, there we go. What? Aimed in the wrong place. Thought that it was going to be on top of one of the uh, catwalks, but it wasn't. It was on the ground. So unfortunately, that's a Hunter's Fury. Not necessarily wasted because it makes space, but it doesn't stop the lockdown from coming through. And now with only two players left alive here for 10 Star, they waited far too long to try and make something happen. And it looks like we're going to be heading to a 7-5. Oh, you hate to see it. Nello picks up the first kill. Unable to get another one though. Seven five half. I mean, this is a lot closer than we might have expected given what happened on our first map. We knew that this was Oxygen's pick and we were a little bit concerned. We were like, oh, are 10 Star going to show up? They have been doing reasonably well, but it just hasn't been enough. If they win the next two pistol rounds, they will at the very least even out the score line. But you obviously want to do a lot more than that. You want to create... We haven't seen a case of that runaway train on this map, but that's kind of that snowball effect that you really want to get into. You want to kind of get into the stride of creating a huge gap in points so that you don't have to worry too much about potentially losing a round and you can just keep going. That being said, they have at least managed to stop Oxygen from going on a runaway train. So, you know, we take the small victories. Small victories add up in the end, don't they? Mm-hmm. Baby steps, baby steps. All right, this looks like Spike's gonna slowly edge its way towards A, but maybe this reveals their location? Yep, exactly that. Now they have the info, they know that there are two people sat towards B long with Nest so aggressively placed. Honestly, she has the info and knows if they're gonna rotate. Calls it out to her teammates. Claw attempting to push onto the site. They so had the swarm grenade slowing them down, denying any sort of spike plant going down. Ritha trying to mow her way through that wall and they've decided, you know what? We do not want this. Let's fall back, regroup and go again. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like they're heading on over to the B site this time around. Of course, Oxygen have kind of clocked that. So they're sending at least one over. Oh, two, in fact. Head them off at the pass. Leave one on the A site just in case 
There's a, a bit more movement there. Maybe it's a fake, but no. Spike is going to be planted. Oh, Proxima. <gasps> Not able to stop it. Oh. So close, though. Four HP and a dream here for Nino, and she's actually able to heal herself up. There isn't going to be a flank either, so they just need to watch this back of sight. That heal came in so clutch. Oh, please keep an eye on for that Viper. It's, 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 all, it's all there. It's all there. Yeah. I am really surprised that everyone just decided to swing out. Maybe they'd run out of, like, snake bites, for example. Mm -hmm. So they just didn't have any more post pump utility. But they all just swing and get mowed down at the at the halfway mark. As It's an unfortunate round here for 10 Star because it was one that they really needed. Yet another one that they needed to get on the board. And they're not forcing up this time around, so true to form. Gonna stick with just pistols. Obviously, oxygen upgrading a little bit. Gear, in fact, gonna be picking up the marshal this time around. They seem to kind of rotate who gets to buy the marshal and see what she can do with it. Maybe it's a little insider contest they got going on, so you can get the most kills with the marshal. Okay, only the viper placed on site as well. And now they hear the updraft. There we go. Info has been relayed. Really cheeky little wall there to deny, you know, any sort of vision from up above the container. Ritha attempting to, you know, shoot through that smoke and do as much damage as possible. Kla, however, the pl look at Kla's positioning right now. Able to pick up one of those kills. And she she has the insider info they're kind of looking for. Ah, oh, unfortunately oh. gets tagged up and spammed through that container oopsie yeah it's quite unfortunate when that does actually happen and that of course puts 10 star at a numbers disadvantage and they're just pushing through the smokes and getting completely mowed down oh my goodness i mean they tried but that wow what a painful round for 10 star at least this time in this round they're gonna be able to buy rifles so they will have an advantage coming into it but that runaway train it's starting to leave the station if they can at least win this round, then they can, you know, have a better chance of closing that gap. But if Oxygen win this round, that puts them on double digits. And that's a very, very daunting position for the opponent to be in. You know, when you realize that you're only on five points and your opponent's already in double digits, you can definitely start to get inside your head. Especially since 10 Star know that this is... If they lose this map, that's it. They lose. That Viper wall going down, allowing them to cross safely underneath the tube with slicey dashing from above. There you go. You see Nello being perched up over here to make sure she's watching the flank. Watching her teammates back, and I don't doubt that she can probably get a 2k here. Just please keep holding the angle. Oh, she's been spotted. Oh. In such a tough position there to try and hold so many different angles, but it is a one for one trade. Literally a watching here. Ooh, oh. doesn't have the right angle. Ness is gonna take her down, but again, trades back. Three versus two, but unfortunately, it looks like it might be tough for Oxygen to get a defuse. They do manage to get another kill here. There's just Slicey left alive. Oh my goodness, they actually make it happen. I thought that Ten Star would be able to buy a little bit more time there, but they play a little bit too far out in the open and Oxygen just clean it up. Oxygen, the cleanup crew. You can see the nodding as well. Clearly in agreement with us. Oh, look at the economy as well. And rightly so. Timeout comes in from 10 star after that round. Of course, they did buy up and invest quite a bit into that, and it didn't really work out for them. Mm -hmm. Not going to be forced down onto like a full save. They should be able to buy... Yeah, they'll, they'll be able to buy rifles and maybe some light armor. But yeah, it's, it's not a really great position to be in because you still want to buy some of your utility, so... We might even see lower buys like Spectres or, or so, mm -hmm. just so that they can actually get some utility as well. And now it's that discussion. I kind of mentioned how if Oxygen go to double digits, 
then it becomes a bit of a mental game. And 10 Star right now are kind of losing the mental game. They're really struggling to get back into this. I kind of thought maybe once we swapped sides, you know, they're running a very aggressive composition. They'd be able to leverage that into more round wins. But something we noted yesterday about Oxygen, they seem to have a really good read on Icebox. Their defense was stronger than their attack yesterday. And even today, their defense has just been flawless. It's been three rounds, but so far it's been flawless. It's They have such good map control. Their rotations are spot on and all of their angles are constantly covered. And Tain Star, yeah, just no answer to it at the moment. Drone. Oh. Oh, they haven't actually been spotted by anything so that works out for them drone goes in tags one of them up please check yellow please check yellow oh that's absolutely heartbreaking ness not able to get one of those kills dashes out to safety that was really really lucky so i had to be able to actually make it out of that alive mm -hmm. especially because she had to dash through the viper wall so yeah all the way down to 40 hp has been healed up though we're gonna see some of those snake bites coming out to try and deny the plant but Tenstar have already headed themselves over mm -hmm. to the A site, made some noise there, called in a little bit of a rotation. But look at all of that Killjoy utility. There are mollies on default. I would be interested to see if Tenstar just plant somewhere else, just not on default. You know, just avoid all of that utility entirely. But I don't, I don't think, think that's going to happen. We've not seen a nest plant yet, have we? No. Oh. Not, not on A site anyway. Oh, oh Gia, that was looking... So promising. Picks up two of those kills. Two very big kills, I must say. Mm -hmm. After popping the mollies as well. Did manage to do a little bit of damage here in there. Slicey oh, picks, slicey. It, picks one up. Even ground now. Three versus three. Nino That's... does have a glow orb available. Oh my goodness. How do you make that work with the Spectre? Does have a res available as well. Bulldog coming in big there. Getting some nice little tap tap fire. And yeah, I mean, at that range, it's ridiculous to be getting that value. And there we go, Slicey. She started on flank watch, then she became the flank. They finally managed to clean it up. Tactical pause, coming up big there. I like the way that they played that. The fake over on the B side, they move over onto A. And then again, they have Slicey moving through mid to you know create that little bit of a flank and first and foremost it denies the flank that oxygen had going and then she's able to turn that into a flank of her own and once you've whittled down oxygen's defenses it makes it difficult for them to check every single angle so they're able to swing mm -hmm. on one another they win that round out but now ness has got an operator in her hands once again 10 star do have some ultimates to play with but like they don't have a ton of smokes to use yes they, so they've got viper but that smoke you know, you, you drop it down somewhere and it's going to stay there for the rest of the game. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you have jet smokes, but you you can curve it, but it, it's not as easily placed as something like an Omen or, or an Astra. So it's not ideal for trying to deal with an Operator. Yeah, Spike is actually left towards a long. So I'm not sure if they're just trying to make as much noise as possible towards B. Maybe make use of all of that util you have and fake them out once again. And, you know, it seems to have kind of worked out for them. Because, you know, four players sat towards B site right now. But I think at this point, they've definitely called their bluff. You can see the rotation coming in from the Sage and the Jet onto A site. And they're just playing this a little bit too slow. There you go. Hunter's Ooh. Fury comes in. Unable to actually pick up a kill on that. Does tag up. I believe it was one of their players, though. Mm -hmm. It tags up Nello a little bit. But she's able to get healed back up. I liked how they all moved together as a team to go and get that res. And now Claw will pop the Empress. And this is, of course, to help secure the site so that they can get the plant down. In fact, we're not even seeing Sage planting. Usually that's how it works. But Nino on top of the wall there just to make sure that those angles are covered. Viper's Pit's going to come down. They're throwing every little bit of utility they have at this. Oh, nice. This is, this is huge. If Ness can maybe try and pull off a no-scope or something similar, that could be big for them. But this Viper oh, definitely blocks a lot of vision for them. Gear pushing through past that wall. Oh my god, Rainsa. Is this doable? Nah. Two versus one there. Lirilia with the Spectre. Comes up big. Cleans it up. 
Just when I think the 10 star are down and out, they start bringing it back. But they haven't been able to string more than two rounds in a row together. This might be the perfect time to make that happen, though. They have forced Oxygen down quite badly. Oh, they were kind of toying with the idea of a hero rifle, but it looks like they're going to go for a hero bulldog. That's a new one. <laughs> okay, okay, no, they're just messing around. Okay, it is actually going to be a hero rifle. Okay. Have a little bit of extra firepower there just to try and make something happen, but Oxygen still have, like, three ultimates online. Oh my goodness, it just actually works oh, out. No. Nope. She tried to dash away, but instead dashed into her teammate, and then she kind of had to just wait. <gasps> Gear picks up one kill, make that no. two. Can she make it a third? Oh. That came so close to crossed. being three kills. I couldn't believe that that second shot, the spray transfer actually hit the headshot there. Oh, Aretha tries so hard, but that's another round there for 10 star. They finally did it! Three rounds in a row! It's taken a little while for them to start warming up, but we've finally at that point now. Two point deficit. No longer a 5.1. Oxygen are able to fall by this round. Oh, this is going to be very, very scary. Ness still has that operator as well. Plus, they still have the Viper's Pit. Now, it's possible that they just drop that over on the B site. Although, given Proxima's pro uh, proximity, uh, given where she <laughs> is, I doubt that she's actually going to drop that so early on in the round. We'll just keep that for later on. See if we actually do need it. Oh, this is such a deep angle from Ness. This could backfire so badly. Especially if they swing together, definitely. They just need to make sure that they don't provide her with the opportunity to get a collapse. Because that would be absolutely dire. She misses the first shot, dashes away to safety. Good choice indeed, but she has heard someone jumping on up by pipes. Calls it out to her teammate. Spots one lower, picks up onto that stage. And they are walled off. A good trade there, making sure that even though Nino got shot down, Slicey is able to get the follow-up kill there. Mm -hmm. Four versus three, and as you said, the Sage wall there denies a little bit of the entryway. Slicey's going to be watching this angle. Oh, Recon Dark didn't get covered. I think they got tagged out on purpose just to like bait because the spikes moving all the way back over towards the b site needs to be careful though someone is watching mid but nello with the suppressive fire stops gear from getting any value plus all the cloud bursts coming through as well they're gonna make their way over onto b oxygen have rotated but at least they'll get here maybe even get that spike down yeah i think they thought they could maybe get out of it quite sneaky but Oxygen had other ideas. Spike plant unable to go down as of right now because of all that life. It's a bit, oh my goodness, Ritha knocked down to 7 HP. Spike being planted, they do have a shot dart. Yes, go on, Proximus. Five oh. seconds left as well. Oh, please just. Oh. So close. If Claude, I mean, she had to run because she was running out of time. And if yeah. she'd been able to get that kill, then she clutches that round out for the team. But unfortunately, Proxima, after hearing those footsteps, just has to hold that angle. Works out perfectly. You know, Claude just runs into her crosshair. She manages to gun that down. It's still a full buy, but they did manage to take the operator away, which is a massive opportunity for Ten Star here. Oxygen have just been looking so good. They only need to win two more rounds. They're coming out with two Guardians here. They don't want to, like, save or half buy if they can help it. They want to have as much firepower as they can to try to clinch out this this map. Because if 10 Star get on a roll here, it's going to be very difficult to rein them back in. Mm -hmm. You can see they're doing the same kind of tactic again, making the noise, using the util. And I think they're actually in doubt as to whether or not this is going to be a full commit to the site, but it does look like it is going to be. But of course, worth mentioning as well that Proxima does have that Viper ult if she decides to pop it on that B site to kind of deny the plant and, you know, do as much damage as possible and then follow that up with the snake bite. Oh, such passive plays again. Mm. Whenever 10 star does this, it's when I know that they're getting like really nervous about how they're going to approach this next play. And again, Slicey, they finally do get all the way into the back of sight. They've taken full control of the B site here. They're fanning out, but Proxima oh. comes up so big. That was a huge two kills there. Four versus three now. 
Oxygen with a man advantage. Oh, Nino, only one kill off. Being able to make use of that ult, and everybody is just remembered that they have ult abilities to use, and they all start getting popped. Oh my word, Nini, on a mission. <laughs> she tried. A worthy the classic. Uh, yeah, I mean, all she had left there was the classic. She does manage to get one kill there, but we're now on match point. That was pretty expensive for Oxygen, all things considered, because they did force up in that round. And so they're not going to be able to have full rifles this round. It's going to be a little bit strange, a little bit of that janky buy again. But I mean, it's a similar situation here for 10 star. They got two rifles and the rest of it's just going to be... Slicey isn't going to need to buy up. She's just going to pop that blade storm. So three rifles and a guardian. They might be in slightly better stead than oxygen, but you can see that Ness has got the same idea. Blade storm's mm -hmm. out. At least Nino still has res available, but someone will have to die in... Oh my oh, goodness no. me. That's blade storm versus blade storm. That's exactly why he needs the... Stage war to go down towards me. Decides to lock that one off and res her teammate instead, but yeah. <gasps> that's hard. The bait. <laughs> Again. That was a full on bait just to get a Ness out so that you could get the kill onto her. And that actually puts 10 star in a numbers advantage position. Like, when that happens to me in ranked, I, I absolutely hate my Sage for doing it. But then we win the round and I'm like, okay, it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get the Elo and you're like, okay, never mind. I don't complain now. Yeah, pretty much. Well, let's see if it actually does lead to a round win. Because they found themselves over on the A side here. And of course, they've taken that Blade Storm oh. from Ness completely off the board. They are actually going to be able to potentially get... Oh my goodness, Nino is so low and she doesn't have a heal available. Spawns have been popped already and Slicey gets taken out by Retha. Nothing else to kind of try and deny the plant at this point. Lirilia has come up so big for 10 star time and again right. here. Can she do it again? Oh, oh there it is, Hunter's that's... Fury to try and deny the plant. That's the wrong sight, though. Oh, okay, oh, Gia in good positioning oh, right now. Drops down, takes up the kill. Very nicely done. And here's the lineups once again. Oh, it bounces oh. off the back wall. Oh, it bounced. Perfect. She doesn't Thursday even have time. another one to work with. They think that she has another one. Tap the spike. Oh, they just keep tapping it. Oh, no. oh that's it. <gasps> so close. The five. The... Let's collect samples. Go ahead. Honestly, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just was gonna say, like, the fact that ten star come up so short is definitely a surprise. But I cannot describe how impressed I am with Oxygen. I said at the very beginning that they were a team with something to prove, and they have proven it tenfold. They absolutely yeah. deserve to be part of the conversation again. They had a great start to the year and things got a little bit dicey, but they were clearly making some changes, working through their roster, working through whatever issues they have. And they have come out incredibly strong here. And I'm super impressed. Well done, ladies. Yeah, well done indeed. Honestly, throughout this entire tournament, we have seen plenty of amazing teams taking part. Of course, a huge congratulations to our winners, Oxygen, for the grand finals of Birds of Prey Episode 2. And commiserations to 10 star, but honestly, great performance from all of the teams that have been taking part. Of course, the teams do in fact get like the first place gets 1k prize, followed by a 500 for second place. So, you know, always not lost, still a worthy prize as well. And of course, I just want to say a huge thank you to the Goose House for hosting and running this. I think it's super important that we kind of encourage inclusivity within, you know, all games, not just Valorant. But, you know, it's been amazing to see the growth and progression of all these wonderful teams taking part. Yeah, I think for me personally, I know that you haven't done a lot of the female scenes, so a lot of it is still quite new to you. But for me, like, 
I've watched these teams grow for so long and it's always just the most amazing feeling to see how much they improve, watch them through all of the changes that they make, all the heartbreaks on Twitter, all the triumphs, you know, and to see it yet again before me, you know, the teams that went out early, my heart goes out to them, to Oxygen who have this amazing storyline, this great like victory run. I'm so happy and proud and I, I just look so forward to the next one. Yes, absolutely. I cannot wait for it. But of course, to all of you fantastic people at home, thank you so much for tuning in and for supporting Birds of Prey episode two. This definitely won't be the last that you hear from us and from the Goose House. And for those of you that haven't yet done so, make sure you join the Goose House Discord, exclamation mark Discord in the chat, and make sure you follow the Goose House across all socials as well to keep up to date with all the latest tournaments and meet some new people and play some fun games. But for now, I just want to say a huge shout out to behind the scenes team, production, admins, everybody for making this possible. And of course, to yourself, Nauri, for you know, kind of carrying me through the broadcast and teaching me a thing or two along the way as well. <laughs> It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm happy that I got the opportunity to work with you. And as you said, huge thank yous to the Goose House, to the production crew, and thank you to the viewers for like keeping it real in Twitch chat. Y'all are so much fun. You are so much fun. And remember, people, one final note, kiss the homies. That's all I have kiss to say. Kiss the homies. Kiss the homies. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time.